Good evening. I'd like to call the select board meeting for Monday, October 2nd, 2023 to order, and I'd ask everyone to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If uh, no one on the board has an objection, I would like to take uh, one item out of order. Chief Gilmet has some announcements. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Chief Dave Gilmet, Chief of Police. Uh, as you saw in your packet, we have a number of uh, personnel uh, matters, all very happy occurrences uh, for, the, for the police department, so I'm just going to take them um, one at a time. Uh, the first on the agenda is a uh, request to appoint John Sullivan a special police officer. This may be puzzling to some of you because John Sullivan is actually already a lieutenant. <laughs> However, he has announced his intention to retire uh, in, in mid-October. So I wanted to um, make sure that uh, we were able to uh, um, um, deal with his request to become a special police officer so he can help us um, with, with, with traffic details. So John has been serving this community for 35 years. He began his, his career as a part-time officer in 1998. He was appointed a full-time officer in 95, and then he was promoted to sergeant in 2003. And then he was promoted to lieutenant in 2015. He's also a graduate of the very prestigious FBI National Academy in Quantico, Virginia. So uh, he's had quite a career with with the Harwich Police Department. So if you do the math there, John was a patrol supervisor for 12 years. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of midnights, a lot of evenings, a lot of decision making, and he did an outstanding job. Uh, he's, he's served in a number of different roles throughout his career. He was traffic officer, crash reconstructionist, he was a firearms instructor, a simunition instructor, an uh, active shooter response instructor. Uh, and then after his, uh, uh, his promotion to lieutenant, he initially served, when I came in as chief in 2015, he had just been promoted to administrative lieutenant, so he was serving in that role with us upstairs, and then he eventually went downstairs as operations. So he's basically held uh, several jobs uh, in, in the police department and done a, a fantastic job. Um, and just to, you know, sum it up, um, as I think of John, and I'm sure I speak for everybody in the police department, the, the late, great Jimmy Buffett had a lyric to one of his songs, which was, if we couldn't laugh, we would all go insane. <laughs> and I think John took that to heart <laughs> throughout his entire career because he is, I've only known him for the time I've been here, which is, you know, a little over eight years, but um, maybe a few more. But um, he's probably one of the most entertaining individuals you will ever meet in a police uniform. Always very professional, but always there with the laugh because, as you know, Police officers see an awful lot and deal with an awful lot of bad things. So that's just one of the great things I appreciate about John uh, is that he's given me, when he was upstairs with us, he's given me a ton of laughs, and I know I speak for the rest of the department, that uh, he's done the same for them. So we want to thank him for his years of service. We want to congratulate him on his retirement, and we want to wish him a very long, healthy, happy retirement. And he is here tonight. <laughs> All right, second on the agenda is the promotion of Sergeant Aram Gosh Garion to lieutenant. So with uh, Lieutenant Sullivan retiring, we, uh, we anticipated this. John let us know well in advance that he was going to be uh, looking at mid-October for a retirement date. So we held a, uh, we held a selection process for lieutenant. Um, and that involved kind of like an in-house process with a panel of three chiefs uh, doing kind of like an assessment center exercise thing, and then there was a written exercise, and there was also an interview with myself and the deputy chief. Aram came out on top of that process. Um, he's done a, a fantastic job uh, throughout his career at Harwich PD. He's been serving uh, in Harwich since 1996 when he was appointed a part-time officer, and then he went full-time in 2001, and then he was promoted to sergeant in 2015. So mostly as a sergeant, Aram has held some, in addition to being a patrol supervisor, Aram has also held a number of um, highly visible, uh, high-level responsibility roles 
as, as a patrol supervisor. Many of you, I'm sure, uh, would recognize him uh, in these roles. Uh, but as a patrol officer, he served as a field training officer. Then he was an officer in charge. That's a police officer who really doesn't have the rank of sergeant but runs the shifts. Uh, then he became a patrol supervisor. He was a member of the traffic unit. He's a crash reconstructionist. And here's the big one. He's a public information officer. And for, for anybody that doesn't know that, that's the individual in the department who uh, we select is going to deal with the media most of the time. They deal with press releases. They deal with social media. Um, so there's, there's a, a large degree of uh, responsibility and a very public-facing look for the, uh, for the police department there. And he's also been in charge of the school resource officer since he made sergeant. He's done an outstanding job in all those roles. Um, and we're really, truly looking forward to um, having him join us upstairs as the, the next administrative lieutenant. So that's uh, Sergeant Aaron Gushkarian recommended as to uh, promote to lieutenant from sergeant. <laughs> and the third, uh, third one is uh, promotion of Officer Tyler Vermette to the rank of sergeant. So um, we held a promotional process. Now, the rank of sergeant, uh, that is by contract that we have to do a certain type of promotional process. So we brought in a, a consultant to uh, have, have this sergeant's process. I believe we had seven people participate, which was outstanding. It involved a 100-question written exam and then an assessment center, which includes some scenario-based exercises, and then an interview with the chief. So uh, Tyler came out number one in that process. Um, he's been with us since uh, 2014. He's always been a very extremely diligent and conscientious officer. He has the interests of the community always first. Uh, and he's been a field training officer, and now he's also been a patrol officer in charge. And he's also one of the two officers on Howard's PD who serves on the um, Cape Cod Regional Law Enforcement Council SWAT team. So a very high level of responsibility there. He's done an outstanding job for us, and I am extremely confident he's going to do an outstanding job as our next sergeant. So that's my recommendation to have uh, Tyler promoted to sergeant. <laughs> and before I leave, one quick announcement. Uh, Wednesday, the 4th of October, is National Coffee with a Cop Day. So anybody that wants to come and chat with myself or members of the command staff or maybe a few, few patrol officers that might stop in, we're going to be at Cumberland Farms from 9 to 10 o'clock down in Harwich on Wednesday, August 4th, in, uh, in honor of National Coffee with a Cop. So thank you. No, no popsicles this time? <laughs> no popsicle this time. The weather's turned cold. Ah. Th thank you very much, Chief. Thank and you. it's... Uh, a pleasure to hear about three outstanding officers in your command. Um, I'm, I'm always dazzled. I love it when you're here with good news. When you're here by yourself, it's usually not the best of meetings. But what an impressive group. All the best to all three gentlemen. Uh, we wish you the best. Uh, would you take that first part of the consent agenda, Jeff? Yes, I will, Madam Chair. I'm thrilled to do it collectively, and thank you, Chief, for your, uh, your narrative on all three of the unbelievable people you have there behind you. I move that we appoint John Sullivan as Special Officer to the Harwich Police Department, effective October 18th, 2023, as recommended by the Chief of Police. Second. We're going to do all three, right in a row. Okay. Uh, I Carving out. You're just carving out a whole section then. We're going to do that after. Right now we're doing F, G, and H. Go ahead, Jack. I move to appoint Se uh, Sergeant Aram Goshjarian to Lieutenant of the Harwich Police Department, effective October 18th, 2023, as recommended by the Chief of Police. I move that we appoint Patrol Officer Tyler Vermette to Sergeant of the Harwich Police Department, effective October 18th, 2023, as recommended by the Chief of Police. Still second. Still second. Still second. Thank you. Any discussion? No, all in favor? A, <clears throat> just a congratulations to all three. Uh, and uh, good luck, John. No, known you for a long, long time, and it's pretty amazing that you're retiring. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just take a minute to let the uh, 
officers depart, and then it's uh, we're going back to the agenda. So we'll start with public comment. Thank you, Carolyn Carey, Community Center Director. And it's October, so I thought I would come before you again and just let you know what events the Community Center is doing. I would like to highlight in uh, our new newsletter is out, and you can get that sent to you um, by email if you just give us a call or um, stop into the center and sign up. We're happy to send it out. Uh, we are sending it to well over 500 people right now by email, and we do print them and have them available in the community center. One of our events that started today, but there is still time to join, is the Walktober event. Um, that's the Community Step Challenge. The next event that we have is an open mic and poetry on October 5th uh, at 6 p.m. at the community center. Um, the next event that we have is on October 12th. Uh, it is the um, environmental causes and prevention for cancer on October 17th we're doing a live clued in murder mystery clue game on October 19th is our boutique where you can come and pick out costumes um, everything that we have is free we are collecting costumes if anyone has gently used costumes we're happy to make sure those get to individuals in time in town who might need them on October 20th at 6 p.m. we're doing our Hocus Pocus movie night. Um, on October 26th we're having an open house at the community center so you can stop by and see the new fitness room and game room and we're doing hand prints um, that we're going to put up in the game room. Uh, we're calling that Lend, a, Lend Us a Hand. Um, then we are doing a military museum lecture. We're doing a whole series of this. They'll be once a month. Uh, this one is October 27th. We, and all of these events, of course, are free. The last one, um, not that I have favorites, because I would not, <laughs> but is our Halloween drive through on October th uh, 31st. And we are looking for volunteers, and we're also asking for candy donations. All of the flyers can be found on the Community Center website. And gee, I think that's enough for me. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Carolyn. I don't know how you do it all. <coughs> Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Powers, my name is Lou Urbano, and I live in West Harwich. Um, I'd like to draw attention to a very important item that you're presently discussing, which is the budget. And I'm going to sound like an old record to some, uh, but basically it involves the word free cash. Uh, we've been very fortunate in the last few years, and especially last year, in the amount of free cash the town has at its disposal. And let's hope that continues into the future. But I would ask that we think about something as it relates to free cash. And perhaps it would help in the budget process, as well as for the citizens to understand it. It's very difficult for us to understand this whole concept of free cash because in my world there is no free cash in my world there is just cash and cash comes from in the government taxes so it's the money that we pay in some ways in excess that the town doesn't need but that's a definitional issue and some may look at it one way some another my request is that you look at something in terms of its usage. Last year I discussed in terms of where does free cash originate from and how does it come about. This year I'm asking you to go one step beyond in thinking about where could free cash be spent on a predetermined basis so it wouldn't cause a budget issue. But if we knew that 50% say, and this is an example, I'm pulling this out of the air, of 50 percent of free cash if it exists any year that it goes towards payment for source the whole community would benefit and it would be great 
to do that. Some may go towards paying for retirement funds that we owe. But that's up to you. I'm just offering suggestions to make my point. But hopefully we can talk about that, you can discuss it, and maybe we can even move forward on something. I really appreciate the opportunity to bring this up, and thank you. And by the way, I wanted to say something else. I want to thank you for your service. You don't get that enough. I know that it's a volunteer position, and you take a lot of hassle, and we applaud the policemen, and they're great. I love them. I'll buy them co coffee every day. Uh, but I never get to buy you coffee, so I can give you a thank you. Take care. Thank you, Lou. Good evening, Jamie Goodwin, station manager. Um, you may remember I was before you in August talking about Comcast changing our station designation from 18 to 8. So we launched a little campaign on the town website for a poll for a new name, and the poll closed on the last day of September. So I know everyone in this room is here tonight to find out the new name of our <laughs> Michelle 18. And uh, 115 people responded. And the new name of Harwich Channel 18 is called the Harwich Channel. And that was picked by the people who responded to the poll. So tomorrow we will launch a little rebranding campaign and we will do a little press release and announce it on the website. Um, secondly, you may notice that this room looks slightly different. I was gonna play a little mind trick and maybe move everything two inches <laughs> to the right until somebody said, hey, what's going on in this room? Um, uh, Caleb Ledoux and Matt Hamilton have been working overtime all summer so I could focus on procurement projects and I finally have a plan in place to replace the furniture in this room. And what we're going to lean towards is symmetry and more space for citizens. As you can tell, we've been busy. So we've removed the projector screen, we've reoriented things, so there's new tables and chairs. So that will be slowly morphing until we get our procurement project in. I'm trying to you know, dip my toe in it and see what people's feedback is about how the room should be oriented. Only a little bit of feedback, not too many cooks in the kitchen, please. <laughs> so we're working on that and that's coming on the pike. Um, I just wanna remind everyone, you can still watch us on YouTube, although our name will change, you'll still be able to find us via all the same links. You can still watch us on Roku TV and Apple TV and those instructions on how to get that screen weave app on those devices is on our website. So, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Hi, my name is Lauren Bumbanti. I'm a resident, I grew up here on the Cape, and today I'm coming to you with a concern and I'm hoping to help and hopefully get some citizens to help as well. Our recreation department is lacking for children's programming and this fall, it really seems to have hit a breaking point where parents were pretty upset. There's a lack of offerings. I'm not sure that you're aware that our closest size elementary school is Brewster. They actually have um, about 70 less kids than we have here in Harwich. However, they have upwards of eight programs that they offer after school, weekends, evenings for their children in their community to get together, not go home and sit in front of a TV, but to continue whether it's right after school or in the evenings. Um, Harwich Rec is down to one program. Uh, football was offered as well as basketball and field hockey. Football has been canceled because of lack of enrollment. However, there was no publication of this. It, the flyers got to our elementary school a day after the enrollment closed. So it's a day late, a dollar short, as well as there was nothing online or in the community for parents other than parents physically going to the community center, walking in and saying, hey, do you have evening programs for children? Some parents work and they can't get there. I'm fortunate enough where I'm a teacher, so I can go there because my school day ends before the office closes. This is not just a current problem. It has happened in the past. This summer, Brewster Recreation had 19 programs for our kids. We had one. And it was an all-day playground I, because I don't need my son to go somewhere all day. I'm home with him. I just wanted him maybe a couple hours here, a couple hours there to get together with some kids for some fresh air time. He's an only child, so it's nice to have him be able to interact with other kids from school and in the community outside of our scheduled play dates. 
they offered a program that was all day, every day for the summer, and it was all or nothing. They also offered halfway through the summer, after July 10th, was swimming lessons. I don't know about other parents in the community, but I was looking for swimming lessons and outdoor activities as early as February. March and April were the most common months for Orleans Recreation, Brewster, Chatham. They had their signups available. Chatham, for example, currently is about half our population of their elementary school. They're still managing to get five programs up and running. And I think it's just a sad state where in such a nice large town with such a full elementary school, one of the largest elementary schools on the Cape, that we have such a lack of availability for programs. And I've gone to the community center, I've talked to the recreation department, which is a little separate from all those wonderful things that they have for adults at the community center. And last, a year ago at this time, I heard we purchased an online program to get the word out there and have parents sign up online. We haven't been trained. It's a year later and they still haven't been trained. I have heard we haven't had enough staff. That is a legitimate concern. My recommendation at the time was have you tried to collaborate with Chatham, with Brewster, to see what they're doing to get parents involved, kids involved. There's lots of resources. I know that there's adults in this community that maybe they're willing to do a craft activity in the evenings with kids. Maybe they're looking to connect with our youth, but there's no platform for them to even say, hey, I'm here and I can volunteer. The one good thing is we have a man, Noop Texera, and he faithfully and consistently runs Hoops with Noop. My son signs up. He's not gonna go to the NBA. He's just looking to get there and have some fun playing basketball with the kids. And it's wonderful, but without him, I don't know that we'd have any programming because field hockey, which has been offered, is yet to get up and running for the fall. Football has been canceled because they had lack of participation. And thankfully, Noop gets his information out there and people know and sign up. But we still had openings because parents aren't aware of what is offered. So I'm here to just let you know that this is a concern. I had over 30 parents contact me when I put information on our Monomoy parents page saying that, hey, just so you know, football's canceled because we got a call that it was canceled the day that they decided not to run the program. And it was disappointing. My son said, why is it canceled again? Last year, we were in the same position. Football got canceled. I went online. And three weeks after the start date, we did have enough families to run the program. But it was because I was putting information online. I have continually given them recommendations and saying, contact the schools. Contact, there's a Monomoy Schools Parents page. There's a Harwich community page. Nothing ever makes it from inside that office out to the public. And I don't want to be the griper without offering to help. And so I am willing to offer my time and whatever limited resources I have. But I just know that this is a consistent concern and it's not the first year and it's not the second year and it's not the third year that parents are continually disappointed and you know, questioning where, what is the recreation department doing for kids? If they can't pull together swimming lessons in a timely fashion, when we live on Cape Cod, we've got beaches and ponds all over the place, 365 cattle ponds. And there is nothing that they can get going. And it's, I feel like some of the concerns are certainly genuine, genuine but it, it seems to be excuse after excuse. And I'd just like to see more for the youth in our community. Thank you for your time. Th thank you, Lauren. Um, My uh, my baby is 44, so I had no idea, but uh, we will take a look so, at this. And I understand it. You, you have to go back to the mic. Okay. <clears throat> so sorry. Briefly, though, Lauren, yeah. okay? I understand it used to be different, so I don't know how it got to the point where when Jeff was a kid, they had programming, and now we don't. What? Maybe he didn't behave. <laughs> <laughs> May, I just don't know how it disintegrated over the years, but I'd just like to see more because we do have such a large elementary school on the Cape. And if you look at the demographics, we don't need to compete with the Joneses, but something more than one program for the winter would be great. 
Thank you for bringing that to our attention. May I say something? Um, Jeff? Quickly. So, Lauren, thank you. Lauren, uh, I reached out to Lauren when I saw this information. She put it in writing, so the town does have a formal request to look into this in, in, uh, f from Lauren, and, and I, I intend on making sure that we do that. Thank you. Thank you. Don? Thank you, Madam Chair. And <clears throat> Unlike, unlike you guys, I have had uh, the, the girl who I was legal guardian for uh, go through it. And I have to say that for four years, we went over to Chatham because there was nothing, <laughs> nothing here that would work. <laughs> so as we move forward, I'm going to be able to fix this tonight. As we move forward, you may want to reach out to the Chatham to see how they're pulling this off because the community is smaller uh, it, and the school is smaller. We... we we, we need you to stand no, to the mic if you're going to speak. But I would tell you, you're welcome to speak. We get it. We got a problem. Now we have to do something about it. Yeah. You're, you're welcome to speak. Thank you. Hi. My name is Bianca Caswell. I'm a resident in Harwich. I grew up in Harwich, uh, like my friend Abby. I came back uh, with my boys because of the community here. And unfortunately, in February, during school break, I was in an altercation with some high schoolers, and my boys, I was coaching at the Chatham Rec Center, their basketball <laughs> team. We ended up getting into a screaming match back and forth, and the community center did nothing about it. I, they apologized, but nothing changed. And when I went to speak to the director and everyone, they placated me and said they were sorry. It's not enough staff. It's not having the resources that these private clubs have, that they just can't do it. Oh, we'll have online signups in five months, or it's just around the corner. I see Elaine running around like a chicken with her head cut off back and forth trying to run all of these things. Meanwhile, I'm on the phone with Sharon Stark over in Chatham. I contacted Brewster as well as DY to see how many of our residents are actually going other places. And honestly, it's quite a few. I volunteered my services to other towns when I would have more than I would have been more than happy to do it here in Harwich. Thank and you. And so I feel like an audit, like they did in Orleans, about our resources and where they're going for our children, really needs to be done. I can't imagine that. I mean, Carolyn does a wonderful job. I got a chance to speak with her after my incident, and the things she's doing is amazing. I just can't understand why we can't do those things for our children. Thank you. We, we, we get your message. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Uh, yeah, um, my name is Brian Wentworth. I'm a resident here as well. Um, just to piggyback to if there is any way to help, because there's never any information on a website. If they need coaches, put that up in July for fall sports. If they need you know, corporate sponsorships, put that up. I need sponsorships to get t-shirts for kids. Kids love a t-shirt, love to be part of a team. Um, there's nothing like that. We have our, our daughter in the soccer right now, and it was, it was sad. It was three different grades, and I think there were seven people because the sign-up was released two weeks before it started, and it was a paper sign-up, no link to register. You had to go in person. My wife and I both work. It's very hard to get over there. Um, and then it started a week late because low enrollment. Well, yeah, no kidding. It was you know, put out two weeks before it started. So if there's any way we can help, you know, that, that's kind of the angle I'm, I want to come from. Like, do you need coaches? Do you need um, help getting sponsorships? Do you need, you know, someone to help run the website? Like, maybe we even contact the tech school, like, make a co-op for, for some of the students there in graphic design. Um, they can certainly, I'm sure that's very easy for them to do, not for me, but, <laughs> um, but I, I think, you know, we want to help as best we can. We don't want to go to another town. You know, there's, there's a lot of options in DY. There's a lot of options in Chatham. There's a lot of options with AAU programs, but we want to have pride in our own town and, and have these programs in our own town. So um, if there's any way to follow up or, like, have information after this um, meeting tonight, I don't know how we would follow up with that. But It's a pleasure to have people that want to point out a problem and also want to raise their hand to help. So I hear you, and we will find a way to find you again through Lauren Perfect. and see what we can do. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much tonight. Thank you. Okay. Hi, you guys. How you doing? Uh, my name is Jay Skaronic. Um, I have been a resident of Harwich since 2019. Um, uh, my wife and I also co-own a business in Harwichport uh, called Murphy's General Store. Um, but first and foremost, I want to thank you guys, like that other gentleman did. You guys are awesome. We appreciate your time. I know you guys sit, sit through a lot of stuff, so it's tedious. Um, and uh, 
the reason why I'm here tonight is to discuss electronic voting systems for the town meeting, the, the, the big town meeting, um, and this might be something on the books. It might already be moved. I apologize. I'm just coming out of the summer mayhem, uh, and we've been <laughs> doing 100-hour work weeks. It's been insane. It's been a great summer. It was a great summer, rather. Um, I, I attended our f the first my, my first uh, town meeting, um, and it was it was really eye opening. It was it was great. I, I had I really insight like a lot of insight into the town and how the town operates. I've never been to a town meeting before like that. It was it was a lot of um, interesting things happening. A lot of impassioned people talking about things. Um, the um, I heard a rumor that the town of Chatham. Um, had recently purchased a um, an audience uh, audience response system, and uh, so I actually did some digging, and I actually called the Chatham Town Hall recently, and I spoke to the woman that actually purchased the system for Chatham recently, um, and um, I've been in touch with those people. Uh, the, the company's called Meridia. This is un, uh, this is something just I reached out to. I'm not, I'm not affiliated with the company at all. Um, the things that I found, and again, you know, I don't want to c complain at all. I know how busy you guys are. Um, that the meeting, the meeting, the two days, it dragged on, and it was a very long, tedious, um, late nights, um, and with the the verbal yay and nays voting system, and then the recounts, and then the the re recounts. Sometimes, I feel like it's time that we. Um, hopefully purchase um, an audience response system for the next meeting. Um, and the reason why I feel this is twofold. I think first and foremost, time management. I think it's the most important thing. I think that if people knew that these meetings are gonna go for six hours, I think a lot of people aren't gonna show up. They're gonna get, you know, leave early. They're, they're gonna miss certain really important uh, things, topics. Uh, so first and foremost, it's time management. And the second uh, reason why I want to uh, talk to you guys about implementing a purchase of this system is to, um, for anonymity. I feel like if, you know, I'm a, I'm a store owner and yeah, I know a lot of these people in this room, I've been friends with all these people in this room, but if I stand up with a card and I stand up in front of a whole auditorium of people, um, you know, it might offend somebody. It might get somebody angry. And I don't want that, especially if I'm a store owner and I'm a business owner. Um, it's very important to me that everyone feels welcome in my store and that they want to come into my store. Um, so, uh, summarizing also too, I feel like in a third uh, aspect of this, I think more people will participate if there's the anonymity. I think a lot of people are too afraid to speak. I'm horrible at speaking, if I'm up here right now, but um, I feel like uh, having that electronic voting system, that accurate electronic voting system will uh, propel people to be more participatory in the next town election. Um, so I was going to leave these with you. I just have um, just information about the system that Chatham bought. <coughs> Excuse me, the Chatham bought. Um, and <laughs> sorry, I'm 48. Uh, sorry. Um, but um, the same system was also purchased in Bourne, and it was also pur purchased in Mashpee. So there are three towns on Cape Cod that are currently <coughs> using this audience response system. So I just want to leave this with you guys. and. Um, Please just get in touch if you guys have any questions. I'd love to be a liaison. Uh, obviously, it's more up to you guys and budgetary, uh, you know, the budget approvals and stuff like that. But thank you so much for your time. Th thank you. Mary, yes. Yeah, oh, hold on one second. Michael? If, if I could just get a show of hands on how many people came out tonight to support looking into the rec department. Thank you. Go ahead, whoever was next on uh, public comment. Hi, how are you? We're good. My name's Abigail McGillan. I am here, one, about the community center, but I also want to voice some other concerns as well. Um, so it doesn't just stem solely on the rec department, but that also falls in the same category as well. My daughter is fifth generation in my family going through Harvard School Systems, which is something huge to say about how long we've been in the community. When I grew up in Harwich, Community Center was a safe place for us to go to. Brooks Park was a safe place for us to go to. We could walk from the elementary school home to the library and it was okay. I understand times are changing, but we can't stay stuck in time. We need to, we need to change with the times as well. Because I'm sorry, I don't think 10 pickleball courts versus leaving multiple broken pieces on Brooks Park for these kids to have very little things to play with as well as very little programming at the community center, very little programming at the library, 
very little safe activities where us parents feel okay and comfortable, I, I just don't think that that's right. We don't cater to the vast majority. We're not just a one generation town. We're a multi-generation town and our future are our children. Our children are going to be hopefully sitting on this board someday or running the community center or be the teachers at this school. And we need to support them by giving them, you know, more opportunities at the community center, more opportunities than just the YMCA at the school because that's not offering as much as it should, you know? Um, like me personally, I would love to be able to afford the private programs for basketball or the private programs for soccer. I can't, I'm a single mom, I'm struggling. Times suck now. The economy is terrible, you know? And people with two, two income families, honestly, some of them still can't afford it. And I know the community center has the equipment for soccer, the equipment for softball. My dad coached soccer, basketball, and softball for me when I went through these community center programs. So I don't wanna hear that they don't have enough help. I'm sorry, that's BS. All of us parents would be more than happy to coach. Sure, probably none of us were in the WNBA or the NBA <laughs> or the MLB or NHL, whatever. But we want our kids to have fun. I'm happy to coach. I played basketball for Fred Thatcher. I did hoops with Noop when I was 12 years old at the community center. He's a legend in this town. I'm sorry, we can do this. And Brooks Park, I have brought my daughter to Brooks Park almost every single day. The same piece of equipment has been broken since July. But the tennis courts, pickleball courts get updated, maintained constantly. Community center is solely, the gym is constantly after school, Saturdays, Sundays, 55 and up, pickleball, pickleball, tennis court, volleyball. 55 and up basketball, 55 and up tennis, 55 and up volleyball. I'm sorry, we have children in this community. We're called a community for a reason, but what kind of community, if we're, are we being, when we're leaving behind the next generation that is our future? Because I'm sorry, that's what our future holds, is our, our children. And yes, it starts at the age four. You know, my daughter's six, but I like to believe she's gonna be an astronaut or solve cancer you know but who knows maybe she'll run a farm and just milk cows all day i don't really care but we need to give these children opportunities like i had because i was safe after school my parents couldn't get me home from school so i'd walk with my friends from the elementary or middle school down the community center and we'd stay there till five we can't do that anymore with our kids and it's kind of upsetting to be honest because i'm sorry we're all here for the same reason and it's not just that or like you know, the library. I will say they offer some great like story time programs, which is nice, or the very affordable ballet program in the basement. Amazing. We need more affordable things because the school offers club signups, what just happened. If you didn't answer your email by five o'clock on Friday, there's only 12 spots, which are free, amazing. If you're not one of those parents to get your kid into those eight slots for hundreds of students, you're out, you're done. Then we have to try Chatham, Brewster, DUI, Barnesville YMCA, all these other places, Orleans, Nauset. Some of us don't have time to travel or some of us don't have babysitters that can drive. You know, I would like to see my daughter have as much benefit as I did when I was growing up because times have gotten better. There's more money in the town. Why am I paying taxes when it's not going towards my daughter's future or other children's future, you know? Or our teenagers. I don't have a teenager in the school, but I want to see them have the same opportunity that my six-year-old, that the 40-year-old 40, 40 does, that the 75-year-old does. Because we're Harwich community, and we should all be rallying around each other. And that's all I have to say. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, good evening. Hello, Patrick Otten, East Harwich. I'm wondering if anybody knows what this specific device is. It's a key. When do I use it? Never. What's it go to? My car. If it's pouring rain and, and I can't get out the door and I don't want to get wet, what do I do? I push my clicker, the car beeps, the lights flash, and it unlocks. Some cars even start just by clicking. There's no theft, there's no... Uh, abuse of power, there's no, nothing going on, no one's going to steal my car, there's 290 million cars in the United States, let's assume half of those have clickers. 
Have a, do you hear about thefts? Do you hear about break-ins? Because people are using clickers to open and drive their cars? No. How about your TV? Do you use clickers for your TV? Or do you shout, channel three, please? Channel 78, please? No, you're not using your voice. You use clickers to change your channel. Has that been uh, interfered with? Has that been abused? No, clickers work. There are 70 towns in Massachusetts using clickers for electronic voting. 70 towns. Orleans, Chatham, all use clickers. Why? As we heard earlier, anonymity, ease of process, the moderator likes it, quick, efficient. Let's move forward, Harwich, and use clickers. I'll send you the data I have from corresponding with Chatham and my conversations with Orleans. I'll send all that to you tonight in an email so you can review the data, okay? I appreciate your listening to me once again on this topic, and I'm playing, pleasing, playing, hoping that you will follow through and get Harwich on board with automated voting in our town meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, John Chori, uh, 153 Gorham Road, and I'll be very, very quickly, because this is probably one of the longest public comments I've seen in a while, but anyway, just to follow up on Patrick, uh, comments and Jay's comments earlier. Uh, I attended a selectman's meeting, an after action town meeting in May, uh, right after town meeting with suggestions on how to better run the town meeting. And one of my suggestions was, and I spoke about it and I put it in writing, was the clickers. Now it's been five months and I was wondering if anyone has done anything on cl investigating my request for clickers since May. And if not, I think it's a very good idea for the two gentlemen that spoke to. One thing they didn't mention was the possible sharing of those clickers with Chatham. We share multiple resources with Chatham. Chatham shares multiple resources with us. We usually have our town meetings on alternate days so there would be no conflict there. And from what I read last week in the Chronicle that I think Chatham's gonna order another 600 or something clickers on top of the 1,200 they already have. So I would ag agree with Patrick and Jay that we should definitely get involved with these clickers. It saves time. It speeds up town meeting, it gives a much more accurate count, and the anonymity there is very important, I think. I think it per this per per people are persuaded not to vote either way because they're afraid of offending their neighbors or being called out for it. So thank you very much. Thank you, and we are, we are looking at it. Your, your words, the three of you, don't fall on deaf ears. We are looking at it. So. Has anyone, what's, when, what has been come of it? Uh, we're just looking at it at this point, John. I don't have a report okay, on it. Thank you. It's been five months since I asked. Thank you. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. My name's uh, Seth DeMontigny. I am here to talk about the rec department also. I'll try and make it quick because I know it's, you know, a lot been said here tonight. Um, my personal experience is with the rec department in Harwich. Um, the kids, you know, well, the, the parents tend to pay a little bit more money than what all the surrounding towns offer and really receive nothing. Um, my son did t-ball the last season here in Harwich, and it wasn't until the second to last day of the t-ball that they were provided t-shirts. Um, the t-shirts showed up, and it was a mixed match uh, assortment of colors that seemed to be left over from whatever they had. Um, the rec basketball last year, um, I coached the program with another one of the um, local dads because as far as we could tell, it wasn't going to happen unless we were the coaches. Um, no one from the rec department ever peeked their head in to see how it was going or to offer any assistance. Again, um, parents were under the impression they were going to receive T-shirts for the kids, receive some sort of medals at the end of it. Kids got nothing, um, no t-shirts, no medals. Um, they only received basketballs from the other father and myself that we shelled out the money for to at least have them go home with something at the end of it. Um, <clears throat> the Hoops with Newbie program, I coached with some of the other fathers the last uh, session and I'm also coaching this session. Again, 
It wasn't until the second to last day where the t-shirts actually showed up. Um, at least the kids got something that round. But our experiences with going to other towns, t-shirts are there first day. They get hats, they get socks, they get shorts. The cost of the programs is usually about half of what Harwich, you know, cost. And people from the rec department actually run those programs. It's not solely you know, based on whether parents are willing to show up and run the program for them. Um, I had a, a talk with the head of the rec department three years ago when my son and I showed up to the community center under the impression from a false listing online that it was open gym. We got there, lights were off, nobody was there. So I looked around for someone to complain to and they said, oh, the head of the rec is here. Would you like to talk to him? So, you know, we had a short talk. Um, more or less got snippy with me when I asked him why there was nothing offered for the young kids, told me that none of the other towns offer anything for pre-K uh, as far as sports go, which was a lie at the time and is a lie right now. Uh, my daughter just got done. She's two, doing soccer in Chatham. Um, at the time, my son was three. We were doing t-ball in Brewster as well as soccer. You know, Brewster, you show up for t-ball, there's three baseball fields all full of teams, usually four to six teams, color-coded t-shirts, it's pretty clear who's on what team. Um, you know, we did the rec basketball, we had 20 kids, no t-shirts, two hoops. You know, it was a little chaotic and a little hard to kind of get it going when we didn't have teams, <coughs> we didn't have enough equipment for the kids to actually play on. It's more or less just uh, like a recess for them, which is all the parents really want here. We don't necessarily need, it doesn't have to be baseball, soccer, football, you know, it could be Legos, it could be painting, it could be anything. We just want our kids to have something to do where they're not on the screens, they're not sitting home eating, snacking, you know, a lot of people like to talk about mental health and that sort of thing, but, you know, the mental health on the kids tends to be a little better when they have group activities to do, as well as the mental health for the parents, you know, who just want maybe an hour once in a while to be able to like decompress and let their kids you know socialize and that sort of thing so I'd like to know where the money even goes for these Harwich rec programs if there's we're not paying for an employee to run the program things cost 50 to 75 dollars they don't receive a t-shirt they don't receive a basketball or a soccer ball like they do when we do the other sports in the other towns um, we go up to Mas uh, Marston's Mills for sports right now because Harwich doesn't offer anything other than the Hoopswood Noopy, which we do two days a week, and we're thankful for it. But, you know, I'm just happy to have a chance to let my voice be heard about that. Thank you. Thank we you. appreciate your comments. Hello, my name is Nancy Peterson. Um, just to piggyback on that, I do want to say that my daughter is in the soccer on Saturdays for uh, preschool, kindergarten, um, for, at first grade, no, for kindergarten, first grade, and second. Um, when we arrived there uh, Saturday, there were, like this gentleman said, uh, about eight kids there. And Susan Fraser did an amazing job running the program, and kudos to her for getting up there and doing that. But it really is something that, you know, I mean, there are a lot of kids in Harwich. Uh, it's $50 for soccer. <laughs> and it's really, really, really sad that this is where we are. Um, we did the basketball, and thankfully, Seth you know, stood up with another parent. There was absolutely no one from the rec department that came into the gym at any point until there was the issue at night, and then they had someone sit there and scroll through their phone the whole entire time. Um, it's really sad. I just, I'm glad that you guys are taking this seriously. Um, you know, a big thing in this town is that you want young families to stay you've got to support them. And a lot of that comes from building up these programs. When I was a kid, we looked forward to rec sports. And it's really a shame that now they are where they are. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Nancy. Hi, my name is Kristen Wentworth. Um, I'm, again, going to talk about the rec sports. I'm sure everyone's probably sick of hearing about this. but. Um, it really is so important to all of us for the reasons mentioned. The one thing that I wanted to bring up also is just um, the, there's no fields. So like, for example, the soccer that we just did was moved indoors. We have four more days of all of those days, two of which are again going to be indoors. It's supposed to be outdoor soccer that we signed up for. 
it doesn't make any sense if it's raining. So they're like, well, this field is used for this for Harwich. This is used for this for Harwich. Well, where's your priority? You're telling there's no other fields in this town that we can use for kids to play? And this is kind of ridiculous. Like, I mean, you look around and there's empty fields <coughs> everywhere. The high school would be happy to have us, I'm sure. They, the fields behind the community center are beautiful, but they're never used. They're like, we literally never see anybody on them. So I go out with my kids anyways, and we hold the soccer practice that's supposed to be held. Let's do it ourselves. So it's not a lack of volunteers. I think, as you can see, we are all happy to volunteer um, in any way we can. It's just a matter of getting the information out. And even the registration process, again, you have to bring the paper to the, re to the uh, rec department yourself, hand them your check. You can't, there's no online sign-up. So even if you wanted to or you were interested last minute, there's no way to even sign up for anything unless you can make time in your work day when you're trying to get to the bus to get to the kids and then you, you can't get there in time. Um, so just one, one more thing that I wanted to mention. Um, please do, I encourage you, follow up in any way that we can help. We are happy to. We will coach. We will help you reach out to resources in the town, whether that be local businesses or sponsorships or any way that we can coordinating. Um, we're happy to help with that. I think just use us. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. We hear you loud and clear. Anyone else for public comment? Okay. Uh, would you do the rest of the consent agenda, Jeff? I will, Madam Chair. <clears throat> What's that? Oh, Jeff? Just, uh, just, just uh, to follow up, because there's no response from the board, because it's public comment and announcement, we can't. There's a lot I would like to say. I'm known for talking too much. Um, count on a follow-up meeting. I know Jeff will probably, if he doesn't, I will, uh, request that this be an ind individual agenda item for you all to come back. There's also the Rec and Youth Committee, uh, and I'm not saying this to create more debate or, or who's done what. Those meetings are important to attend also. I've been to several of those meetings. There's never anybody there. Um, the last four times I've done interview for Rec and Youth has been one applicant. Um, that's another thing that would be great if some people would put in to be on that committee because that's where a lot of the decisions are made. So don't think that we're not talking because we don't hear you. We're not talking tonight because we can't. But we will follow up. Back to the On the town website, there's a citizen's activity form. That's the box you check, put your name on it. And if there's a vacancy, you'll get called. Okay. But start there. Thank you again. And I'm going to request as well, please put electronic voting on your agenda to be discussed within your board. And I would uh, just say, Mary, thank if you. I may, uh, this, as, as mentioned previously, is a topic that we have talked about. It is not happening fast enough for some, but it is certainly something we are talking about. Correct. and that is scheduled to be on future agendas. Okay. Thank you all. Okay, Jeff, Thank the uh, rest Perfect. of consent. I move that we approve select board meeting minutes for September 11th, 2023, September 18th, 2023, September 25, 2023, with one modification. And Don, you're going to help me with this one. It was the September 18th meeting, if I'm right? It's September 18th meeting under public comments and announcements uh, in the last paragraph uh, at the bottom of the page. In the name, it says uh, Ray, name inaudible is Ray Gottwald. So I make that as presented by Don, make that, that motion presented by Don. And then I would also uh, move that we approve the resignation of Mary Maslowski as the planning board representative to the Community Preservation Committee. I move that we approve the resignation of Mary Maslowski for, from the Harwich Housing Committee. I move that we approve the resignation of John Connolly from the Golf Committee. I move that we appoint Mary Maslowski as Select Board Representative to the Community Preservation Committee, term to expire 6-30-2024. And I move that we accept the donation to the Wetlands Revolving Account from Ed Odyssey in the amount of $300. Second. Any discussion? Don? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, I would be thanking Mary Maslowski, but she's actually coming back in a different capacity, so <laughs> that would be redundant. Um, I would like to thank John Connolly, and I hope it doesn't become a trend uh, with resignations from the Golf Committee, but we uh, heartfelt thank you for serving. Thank you. Any other comments? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next item on the agenda is old business, and the first item is the review of the golf committee charge, and I just want to make a few opening remarks on that. The oath I took uh, two years ago meant that I would make all decisions based on the best interest of the town, and I don't take that lightly. Prior to running for the office, a former selectman who's also a friend of mine said to me, and I didn't understand it at the time, but he said, one of the hardest parts you will find is that some of the decisions you make, you know things that cannot be shared with the public. And I thought, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's become obvious to me over the two years how often that does happen, and this particular issue is just fraught with that. There are things that we at the table know that we cannot discuss publicly, and that has made this exceedingly difficult. We're here tonight to discuss the charge for the golf committee. We are not picking on the golf committee. If you've followed any of our meetings, this is part of a process of reviewing all committees. And we started specifically with those that are advisory. We're, um, Emily Mitchell and a, a team that she worked with really gave us some nice definitions of the different committees. So we said, we'll start with the advisory ones and work with the regulatory, and there's a third category that I've forgotten later. So again, golf is not being picked on. They were one of the advisory. Each one of us said we'll take a couple advisory ones, and that's where we'll start. Um, Selectman Handler has done an exceptional job in lead, leaving no stone unturned looking at this. And I really credit him for his professionalism and his ability to stay even-tempered through it all. It's not been easy. I believe he has done that in the best interest of the town. He's held several meetings, both public and a couple of private. Tonight, Jeff is going to present the proposed charge, and the select board will deliberate it and vote on it. I will not be taking public comment because we have already had plenty of it. We had a meeting that we had at least an hour and a half discussion, and then I don't want to calculate how much time Jeff and our town administrator have spent on it. When uh, Jeff and our town administrator met last week with the golf committee, they also offered to anyone on that committee that they could have a private conversation with Jeff and, and our town administrator, one or the other, to talk about the things that cannot be talked about publicly. So far, three people have chosen to do that, and I encourage the others, you're, you're welcome to that opportunity. It is still available. Uh, with that, I would like to turn it over to Jeff to present the new charge. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I want to say in the beginning of, of this meeting here that this has been a difficult process. I'm happy I was the point person for it, for sure. Um, creating a clear charge for the golf committee and a potential template that can move forward to all other committees was something I thought was going to be pretty easy to do, and it turned out to not be. I've made plenty of mistakes along the way. I'll be the first one to admit it, and I'll be the first one to own it. Taking a closer look at the draft that I presented a couple weeks ago to the select board, uh, I agree that there were some edits that needed to be, edits that, that were in order needed to be made. I relied on the help of some of the golf committee relied on the help of some of the comments made at the select board meeting regarding some of the edits that they thought would be appropriate. And I believe two major edits that, that were made was with the composition of the committee. That came as something that it was clear to me that that just wasn't the path to go. And again, I have no authoring ownership of this draft. I'm just putting it together with, with people's input. But that, that was made loud and clear to me by some select board members and some members of the public and the committee. Not a good idea. So that's been removed. And then the big one for me, as, as a select board member, a Harwich resident, uh, trying to develop a level of trust with the town and transparency, 
the conduct aspect of the uh, charge, uh, it <coughs> did read punitive. And I'll be the first to admit that. And I am sorry that that got put on that charge in the fashion that it did. Much of that aspect of the charge has been removed. Uh, as Madam Chair said, three, actually four of the golf committee members uh, have been spoken with um, individually, separately. Three, uh, personally with Joe and I, I want to thank Joe for your time and, and your, your effort that you put forward to, to, to make that happen. And one by phone with me. All meetings extremely valuable in my eyes. All meetings extremely valuable. But the one meeting that I would say made me feel really good and think we're moving forward was the one with Madam Chair. Uh, Martha, you are, without exception, one of the most wonderful people I've ever met. You're an all-star in every sense of the word. You're honest. You're, 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 you're straightforward. And I believe when I walked out of that meeting, there was nothing that the three of us disagreed on. I think that was a really good meeting. I, I might be wrong, but I walked out of that meeting feeling that, that the three of us, Joe, you, and myself, agreed on, if not everything, pretty close to almost everything. And that makes me feel really good about the, about the future here. Um, with that, I also, I will say that a resident uh, spoke, uh, sent me an email yesterday or the day before, um, mentioning that removal of the words chair at the top and chair email, so putting the, the actual chair's name on top of each advisory committee charge and the chair's email was unnecessary. And I also feel that that would, uh, that would be a modification that I'd like to put forward to the board. Uh, it just doesn't seem like we need to do that and every year they're gonna re reorganize and then we'd have to re-update it. Just one more thing for everybody to do. So I thank you for that. Um, other than that, I feel this, this uh, charge checks all the boxes. I've listened and learned, and I put forward this charge for the select board to deliberate. Any questions for me or? Don? I'll defer to Michael first. Well, as the former liaison, I would like to hear your thoughts first. All right. I appreciate the efforts uh, that were made, and I've, I've said that, and I think you, you, you're on your way to a certain degree. But uh, first of all, I did ask for the committees voted on draft uh, uh, charge to, to be in the pa packet, not to deliberate, but to make sure that the public saw it. And I still feel that's an important thought, it's because it is a, it's a public document. What do you mean? Say that again. I missed it. They had did a working group, they put together a proposed charge to send over, and I, I asked for that to be in the packet, and it is not. So I'm just pointing that out. Um, as, far as, as far as what's written here, my concern is by the time you get halfway down under scope and procedure, it starts varying greatly from what the charter says. And even if you're going to uh, claim there's inconsistencies in the charter, you can't resolve them by creating a charge that resolves them. The charter itself has to be changed in some manner or another. My, con my specific concern is words like, when directed by the select board, uh, the golf committee will then work to accomplish the directive of holding public meetings. The agenda items will represent the select board's requests. But you get down to con conduct, and under the open meeting laws, I, mean, I can't see how it could even be done because they're not allowed to hold meetings unless we direct them, and they can't possibly come to the select board or the town administrator, which I object to anyway, because uh, even if there's a problem with personnel, it should come through the select board, and the select board would talk to the town administrator, uh, un unless the town administrator is going to accrue every single committee as a liaison himself. Uh, but more to the point, I mean, it just, it just reads like when I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. Uh, it, the general provisions of Charter 721 say, town agencies established by or continued under this chapter shall possess and exercise all powers given them under the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth and shall have and exercise such additional powers and duties as may be authorized by this charter, by law or vote of town meeting. Uh, the absent 
there is the select board narrowing down what the uh, charge allows the committees to do. It's specifically 713.1, golf committee of seven members shall be appointed by the board of selectmen, which is now the select board for three overlap, three year overlapping terms. 713.2, the committee shall have full power and authority for the maintenance and operation of the municipal golf course. 713.3, the director of golf operations or employee having general powers of supervision of the golf course shall be under the day-to-day -day supervision of the town administrator within the scope of general policy and direction established by the golf committee. Nowhere in that does it give the authority to the select board to actually direct that the only time that they can meet is when we tell them they can meet on the agenda subjects we tell them they can have. At that point, it's not advisory. We can't know what we don't know when we don't know it. That's why we have advisory committees. I mean, you can go ahead and do this, but it's totally inconsistent with the charter. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't take much to resolve it, but it, in its current form, you can't possibly have anybody doing what you're saying in the conduct because they can't meet on anything that's unknown to us. They, ca they can't agenda that. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> they cannot agenda anything according to this scope and procedure unless we instruct them that that's what we want them to look into. So we would already know what it is we're going to tell them to do. They can't get to this point where they speak to either the select board or to us on matters that they feel are of concern to them because they cannot hold an open meeting under this charge without our direction telling them to do it. So anybody coming to, whether it's their chair or anybody else on that committee is coming as a private citizen, they can't take a vote because we're not allowing them to. I don't, I don't see how this works, and I'm, I'm specifically concerned that it's inconsistent with the charter. And as we go further into this, if we start saying that every advisory committee only does what we tell them to do, we've got a lot of homework to do, and that's not what we meant by advisory in the charter. It just isn't. Uh, to, to, the, to the charter question, um, and I didn't bring my copy with me, but the one that you're talking about that says they direct the operation is, that, is clearly inconsistent with the rest of it. And that's, I think that's part of how we got to where we're at, is it is inconsistent. But you can't change charter language by, by making it codified in a charge. The charter language itself has to change. The, the charter language you can't do all three of them because they contradict one another. I get that, but I'm telling you, you can't come up with a charge that is not derivative of the charter. It is in, uh, if we had a charter uh, compliance uh, committee, they'd tell you the same thing. Everything starts, it's pyramidal. It starts with mass general law. Then we have a home rule charter that we wrote, and we, we uh, voted on it at a ballot box after it went through a town meeting, and that's the language that we have. So it was revised uh, roundly, I guess 2009, when it went to the general court on a full vote to revamp it again. That's what you got in front of you. If we've got a problem, I'll grant you, I don't want, I don't want anybody directing the actual activities of any employee. Right. But the policy and operation is supposed to be reviewable by, by them in order to give us advice about what we uh, should be looking at. We can say no at that point, but to mute it so that we c they've got to sit by a phone and wait for our instructions and not meet until we tell them to is absurd. If that's the reading of the charter from here on in, we're not going to have any advisory committees at all. There's no point. This, this. Yes, I Michael. I ask you to address the audience and please tell them to stop talking because the <laughs> microphone is picking it up and that there's a proper way to talk. Yes, please follow those instructions. It is distracting. The um, charge that Jeff just read, which is... Which I agree, put a lot of effort in, and I applaud that. So just so it's not I'm hammering him over this. It's just... You're not hammering me. <laughs> this came from legal. This came from others. This is, I have no authoring ownership to this whatsoever. I made that abundantly clear. I'm just following uh, some, some recommendations from legal and from some others. And that's where I wanted to go. We, we knew this discrepancy in the charter. That is not breaking news to us. And that's why we had a conversation with 
our attorney. And he said we have the right to have the charge the way we have it. Michael? I would ask that, uh, through you to the town administrator who has spent an awful lot of time on this also. Um, as far as Don's, Don Selectman Howell's um, description of the charter and the points that he made, what's your opinion on that? Well, first, I'd, I'd be a little bit loath to do it without the charter in front of me, but um, if I could, one of the things that caught my ear was the concept of a, um, a charter compliance committee. Um, Mr. Howell and I served on bylaw charter review years ago, uh, long before I was um, ever thought of uh, working in this town, I think. Um, and I know it was an effort that that committee tried to get going, but it never took off. So if we're relying upon a charter compliance committee to back up the thoughts, I think that's a, a tough way to go. Beyond that, I would agree with what uh, you folks have said. Um, I can tell you firsthand as county employees, there is a fracture between what committees want to do, what they think they can do, and that intersects and has intersected very negatively um, in several instances. And my obligation, as I've said under the charter, is chapters four and five, which are town administrator and town administration, day-to-day -day operations, and if chapter seven committees are gonna come into contact with that, I'm gonna focus on chapters four and five. So um, I understood this effort by the board. First, generally was, as you've said at the top, Madam Chair, to create a template for all of the committees because um, I've always thought it was widely or um, universally understood that there's disconnects in the charter language. So I, I hope that answers the question. Some of it I don't know that I can answer without looking at the charter. Thank you. Given the, um, given the conversations that you had with town council, though, is it accurate that the charge put forth tonight reflects town council reviewing and telling us that, it is a, it, that we're legally okay to do so? So I actually didn't speak with council. I believe the two colleagues did, so they can speak directly to that. However, I understand it comports. And that would be my question to the chair. You are correct. We, we were advised that this does not conflict with the charter and is within, within our authority. Thank you. Um, each and every one of us had an opportunity, including members of the golf course, to have a meeting uh, or express our thoughts uh, individually. And I can point to my email where it says, do not discuss with each other, for that would be chain deliberation. The only deliberation uh, that I gave was a few thoughts on this, but I would tell you that <coughs> Selectman Handler's um, job on this was outstanding. Don's rem remarks tonight, I'm not sure if they ever went to Jeff um, for consideration or not, but he was certainly given the opportunity to um, because in a public meeting we said to send the thoughts to Jeff. Further, the remarks that were just made related to the charter and what we're doing wrong, it's funny, I read clips about that on Harwich Old Timers this weekend, which seems to be one of our former <coughs> forms of government and a place to air out thoughts based on half conversations with no input from this board whatsoever, being that it's not legal for us to put input on that thing. And, and I applaud the amount of people that have called me to ask me what's actually going on because of the cryptic conversation. And because we can't get into the fact that the union delegate representative to two employees has made it abundantly clear that those employees will not work with this golf committee. I support the charge 100%. Two years ago when this all blew up, I said we should dissolve the golf committee and start from scratch, and I stand behind that. All we managed to do was remove two members of the golf committee that the majority of the committee at the time and one selectman thought was the right thing to do in many, many, many private meetings. All my words, all of Jeff's words, and others have been done at this table. And as I've said to every human that has called me and asked what is going on with the golf committee, number one, the golf committee charge is, belongs to the board of selectmen. The thought that we're going to use Harwich Old Timers, the Charter Bylaw Review Committee, and others to put input in on that without our direction 
and for them to have all these half conversations that we can't chime in on should not be what you all want as your town government. It should all be done here. And I would point everybody to the August 23rd, 2022 meeting, starting golf committee special meeting, starting 17 minutes into that meeting, and watch that meeting and ask me and ask yourselves, is that how you want your town employees to be treated? And I would further by saying that same social media site that we're giving credit to ruining our town would never look back. I look back at the golf committees, not Carol, because you said that Jeff told me to. I look back because you told me to. And others on the golf committee told me at the last meeting to watch the golf committee meetings, which I did. And our employees should never be treated like that. And this is an effort to save the golf committee. If I had my vote, we'd be voting to dissolve it in its entirety and starting from scratch. Don. I'm not going to get into a back and forth, but several of these things are total mischaracterizations, and you know that for a fact. It wasn't just me operating on my own. You were fully aware of what was going on. Mary was aware because she went to meetings uh, and observed them. There were a number of people. We actually referred people to the interview committee, which I was not on. So this was not, and I'd be very careful about going on much further because there are also another set of employees here. All committee members are special town employees, and if you're going to vilify them in public, be very careful about I'm that. Gonna, I'm not going to uh, go back and forth with you either, but I'm not mentioning only mention of Carol was because she was pointing and pointing to Jeff, and I'd do it again. As far as the mischaracterizations, Don, I will not allow you to sit at this table tonight and do what you did to me last meeting on the golf committee and say something was factually incorrect when I brought up conflict of interest. And a simple read of Chapter 268 in the open meeting law specifically <coughs> states what I was talking about, and you agreed with me the next day, and I called the state to get the state to agree. And you were right in one instance. You brought it to me as chair, and I told you to bring it to the interview committee. What I'm talking about is the two hour long meetings that went on with certain members of the golf committee and two members of the golf committee that were pushed out. And if you want to go back and forth, I've got 14 pages of notes. You're not going to speak like you're the only one that knows what they're talking about and shut me down. Not happening. Okay. This, can this we is typical can, of you. May I? Can we take a. <laughs> yes, Jeff. May I? Yes, Get back please. to the golf committee charge. <clears throat> My feeling is I would like to see the golf committee salvaged. I would like to see all committees do exactly what they're supposed to do for the town of Harwich, which is add value and make things better. That's why we're all here. There's no question about that in my mind. The fact does remain uh, that when, and, and I'm going to ask Don, and this might not be the right time to ask, but in the very beginning when I took over as liaison, you made it very clear this golf committee had a lot of trouble. They were outside their lanes. They were doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. Is that a fair representation of what you told me prior to that first meeting? Only if you say the second half. What's the second? Oh, that let I me finish. That you feel are going in the right direction, right? I was, that is here for me to say. And you are 100% right that that is exactly the exchange you and I had, and I appreciate that. Um, however, I think what's being overlooked is that the situation then is the same situation as it is today. With respect to Mr. McCaskill's position, that we have a fracture, and I'm going to leave it at that. So as I'm trying to navigate my way through writing a charge that can be supported by the three most important groups, which is the public, the golf committee, select board. We all have to do, we're all the public. Every one of us is part of the public here. I tried really hard. I tried really hard to check all the boxes. And I believe I did. I believe that purpose and I, I don't, I don't want to shortchange this, Madam Chair, so forgive me if this goes on a little bit longer than it should. Purpose is the charter. 
It is the charter. Absolutely. Okay. The top half is true. The second piece of purpose is from council, and I don't see it to be punitive. And as I've stated in one of the last meetings, this charge is not being written for this golf committee. This charge is being written for the next 20 golf committees. It has nothing to do with the people who are sitting in the seat right now or the, or the employees who are in their seats right now. This has nothing to do with any of that. So I don't see the second half of the purpose that legal put in, not me, legal, cut and paste, I don't see a problem with that. And if I was a new committee member on the golf committee, I'd read this and go, okay. I also know that you told me that the golf committee is searching for direction. And maybe not exactly that way, but they didn't really know what to do. And, and the golf committee also said that to me. So while I'm writing the charge, I'm trying to find a way to make it so that they do what they're supposed to do. And more importantly, not do what they're not supposed to do, as you put it, out of their lanes, going to Romans, going to the director of golf's office, so forth and so on. So because of that, I went back and I added, the golf committee chair may request information from the director of golf or the select board specific to the maintenance and operation of the golf course to provide future recommendations. That goes straight to the top of the charter. That part's fine. Thank you. Too. The other part under conduct, which I will make emphatically clear as I reflect back on my behavior and my performance the first time, it was abhorrent. And thank you for pointing that out to me. You said, I think you were the first one to say you could, get, you could do away with the conduct piece. I appreciate that. Actually, I don't want to take credit for that. It was the gentleman in the front row. <laughs> well, then it went through out of his mouth to your ear and over to me. I so agree. thank you to whoever that was. Um, but the conduct aspect is what was in the charge in the first place that, that the golf committee was using. And then a little piece by council to do what the golf committee requested from me, which was not maybe specifically at me, but I believe it did happen, but in conversations of we really don't know what we're doing. We really don't know what, what to do or what direction we should take. So what was happening was they were grabbing information from other pass holders at Cranberry Valley, making that an agenda item, talking about that in public, and causing a fracture. So the, the, the whole point of this was to dance between all of that, to give them what I thought was not a limiting charge, but a charge that was going to give them direction and allow them to be effective and efficient and not hit me with the questions I was getting from the very beginning, which was, we really don't even know what we're meeting on. We don't even know what we're doing. So how can, how, how I can't find a negative at all with the select board liaison going to the, to the chairperson and saying, here's something that came from the director of golf. We would like you to explore this. We would like you to hold public meetings. We would like you to come back after those public meetings and give us an unbiased, non-evaluative opinion and recommendation. That's all this is. I can't, for the life of me, find a negative, and I'm unsure why maybe now you flipped a little bit from telling me to go fix it to now telling me that what needed to be fixed, which is still in place, by the way, the, the, the main fracture issue is still in place. I think this checks all the boxes. And, and as I said to Madam Chair when we left, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that we can work together. I'm hopeful that there can become good dialogue and, and collaborative work between the director of golf and the chairperson, not all the committee members. That was another point that you made, right? They were out of their lane. And, and honestly, I believe it's okay because there was no malintent. They weren't trying to do anything that was um, dilatory to the town of Harwich. They were just trying to do what they thought was in the best interest of the taxpayers, the golf course, and everybody else. But they weren't doing it right. And you were the one who told me that day one. So I sit extremely comfortable with this charge because I really feel that this can work for this committee. Removing chair, removing chair email. Uh, other than that, 
unless you want to make, and, and this is, I'm saying this is as respectfully to a person who served so long for this town, unless you want to make a clean, clear, concise sentence of a change that we can deliberate, I'm put, I, I, would, I would move that we put this forward. Don? Let me ask you a question because sure. that would derive this. And, and nothing that you said before, before this is incorrect. I, have, I did say, and the committee knows I said, that there was business being done on the golf course and only a few members actually knew what was going on. And that was never right. Uh, and they all finally wound up seeing that. It's like everybody in the committee needs to see the same thing in public, uh, in real time. Mm -hmm. um, in your mind... Can these folks meet ex uh, on any other occasion other than what we instruct them to meet on? As it says here, the answer would be no. Then how can you get to the point where you can ever use the conduct clause? Because, because they can't do that on their own. They can't go to either us or him because so they can't meet unless we instruct them to, on a subject to meet. Great question. May I answer, Madam Chair? Okay. okay, so I'm going to pick out one part of that question because it it was learning, I learned this as well. Operations, uh, uh, if, if the golf committee has, last line, if the golf, golf committee has any concern regarding the operation of the golf course, it shall communicate such, such concerns exclusively to the town administrator. Now, if I'm correct, I might be wrong, I'm gonna lean on you a little here, Joe. Is that in the committee handbook? Uh, it's directly from that. Okay. But they can't act unless they're in, in session. They no, cannot act. Without. No, they can. And this is what the discussion- committee. It, not as a committee, but Madam Chair could go to, if, if there was a discussion on the golf course, and, and again, I'm learning I might be wrong, Joe, please correct me. If there's a discussion on the golf course about something that is operational and, and deemed an issue by a committee member, that committee member can go to town administrator. Is that what, I, is that what I've understood to be the that, case? That's my understanding as well of the current committee handbook requirement. Right. So there is a provision. Not as a committee member, as a person. They it's in the they committee handbook. Meet. If they haven't met, that can't be a committee action. I don't think, I don't, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, the committee handbook gives direction under page four as to the obligations of members of committees. And if a member of a committee has concern that ties back to employees' operation, they're directed by the handbook to talk to the administrator. I believe that's what your colleague was getting to, but I'll let him speak well, for himself. Not only what I was getting to, uh, Joe, but what council, that was council's recommendation as well. Then the recommended edit would be if, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not sure if this is gonna resolve my problems, but it will resolve operational stuff. If a member of the golf committee has any concerns relative to the golf course policies, because they cannot corporately come up with a meeting f for anything we haven't already instructed them to meet over. I would only ask, uh, Joe, what is the specific language in the golf committee handbook? Because if we're plucking it from that, I don't know if we'd be able to modify. I don't know, but I can grab it if you need it. It's downstairs. Madam? What? Would you, <laughs> would you like him to go grab yes, it? Yes, please do. And perhaps while you're doing that, um, I believe there's nothing in this charge that prevents a member of the golf committee to coming to the liaison and saying, we would like to have a meeting on, I don't know, the greens fees. Mm -hmm. And then you, you can direct them to do that. So they, they can certainly ask for topics. They don't have to wait for us to dream them up, but I see us coming up with some topics. When it's budget time, we would maybe ask them to look at the current rates and give us their thoughts. And I, to your point, you're right, and I have a list of several agenda items that I would love to put forward to the Golf Committee to hold public meetings and get public input. I, I have them, they're ready to go. Um, some, some things need to happen prior to that, of course, but at the end of the day, I hear what you're saying in that language that, 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 you, uh, 
that you added, modified. A member of the committee. I, I, can I agree. Can approach the liaison or can approach the town administrator, but the committee can't. I agree. I just want to make sure that we're not flying in the face of what's already in print, because that's kind of what, what I've been doing for the last several months or several weeks is going to one document and reading it and then going to another document and reading it and going, well, that, that, no wonder there's trouble. And then you go to the third document looking, hoping for some clarity on one of the other two and it, and you've, you've even mentioned that to me early on. And the first part of this is perfectly consistent with every, it, just so Michael hears this, you and I did have like an hour phone conversation. We did with this. the first charge, not with this new one. Yeah, but some of this, some of this language issue is still the same, so. And I changed some discuss. of the language due to our conversation. Got so, it. and I thank and you I for that. I appreciate that. And I thank you for that, Selectman Howell. The envelope, please. You're getting in your steps. <laughs> Do don't you know? hand it to me. I don't know where. Memorized it. Do you know? Oh, I, I, I believe oh, the you, references were under page four, and it, thank that's you. where it lays out the requirements of committee members. This might be coming right back to you. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, Joe. The, uh, Recognize and support the defined administrative chain of command and refuse to act on complaints as an individual outside the administration. Am I going down the right road here? I believe that's where it starts. Give the town administrator full responsibility for just discharging his or her disposition and solution. Therefore, all boards, commissions, and committees shall direct all problems or conflicts which cannot be solved in-house to the attention of the town administrator. Is that? I believe that's why council advised you to incorporate the language that's in your draft chart. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Further, direct all legal questions or request to town council through the town administrator or person designated by the town administrator. To be clear, what was happening was it wasn't, that wasn't happening. It was getting vetted and publicized in public meeting, making certain people in, in the town feel a certain way, leading to the fracture that we have today. So. As I'm writing the charge, the, the new charge, this is all in, in my head and I'm working really hard to try to figure out a way to keep a valuable part of the town's committees while also giving them bumpers. And by the way, I would also suggest that if we took any other committee in the town of Harwich and just inserted different names and a little bit of a different Obviously, bike, bikeways is, isn't going to be handling the operations of Cranberry Valley, but you could certainly change very limited amounts of language and place this charge for all committees, which I think was the intent. I'm not saying this is the right one. I'm just saying that's, that, that was also the intent as I was authoring this. So thank you, Joe, for that. Thank you. Don. Thank you, Madam Chair. It still gets me back to the basic conundrum. No matter what you say with this, it still talks about the committee. And I'm telling you, they can't do that without an open meeting. So it would make they, you They happy. cannot have uh, an, a okay. committee op uh, opinion to approach anybody with if they haven't had a meeting to it. And the only way to have a meeting is to post it and do it publicly. So, so Madam, may I? Yes, please. If I, if I may, I agree with you, the language needs to be edited. The question to Joe, for a little advice here, would be if the charter is almighty and the charges are the purview of the select board, does the select board have the right to modify a committee handbook's language in real time and make a vote because I'll be honest with you, I can get right behind what you're saying because it further clears up an issue. And I thank you for your input. So, yes, thank um, you. If I heard the question, because and the committee handbook was created by past boards of select. Thank you. If a golf committee member has any concern regarding the operation of the golf course, it shall communicate with such con communicate such concerns exclusively to the town administrator. I hope you all paid attention because that was in my, mo my coming up motion. 
So does that solve one of the issues for you? Yes, and I've actually explained that to you before. And here's one area we might actually all agree on. Uh, all this is pyramid. It starts with MGL, it goes to the charter and, uh, and or bylaws, and then it goes down to manuals. And the ma nothing that was said in the committee handbook can say anything other than something derivative from the charter. The charter. Because it doesn't govern the charter, the charter governs it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just pointing that out. I mean, you have to have a meeting in order for them to be able to make that with this kind of language. If, if we you agree. have a member do, going, that's fine. We I agree. Mean, prefer it to be the chair, but you can't deliberate serially. So it can't be the chair unless member A tells member B who tells the chair, because that wouldn't be right either uh, legally. So I'm hearing, in the interest of time, I'm hearing you agree with that modification. So may I make a motion? You may make a motion. I move that we accept the Golf Advisory Committee charge. Can, can you just change that to the Golf Committee because it is It was the Golf Committee's request. I, I, it may be, but it does, it's, it's not in the charter as a judge. Just trying to get everybody in there. So yeah, sure, I can do that. I move that we accept the Golf Committee's charge as presented with these modifications. Omission of chair and chair email and language change from if the golf committee has any concerns to if a member of the golf committee has any concern regarding so forth and so on. Second. Any further discussion? Don? I, I'm not gonna <laughs> subvert you here, no. but, I, but I am gonna say that <laughs> I still don't like the idea ultimately as we go forward of us telling all our advisory committees because the whole point of advice is we don't want to get in the weeds with every single area of expertise. We, we appoint people for that. And if every committee is just going to wait by the phone and wait for our instruction, it's going to be a long winter for us. Could I add? Well, I'm going to let you add. Would you like I to make I, a modification? I, on the I language? don't know what modification you want to. Wear. I mean, with agreement of the, uh, you know, agenda may be posted with the agreement of the liaison, through, uh, as expressed by the board of selectmen, might or a select board might work. But right now, it is, it's all based on us instructionally setting, picking up the phone and saying, you know what, Martha, we want to have a meeting. Here's the subject. So they can't possibly as a committee come up with anything other than what we are allowing them to. I personally would like the ability for every advisory committee not to have any interface with an employee because that we all, I think we all agree that was wrong. I think everybody sitting here knows that I have mentioned that, what, about 300 times here? Um, it, it, it's on tape. Mary has heard me say that. There, there, there's two things going on. Joe manages the employees. We manage the policies. And that's and their advisory as an expression to us of what it is they're recommending. So if, we're if we can allow them at least some mechanism so it, they don't have to just wait there for instructions, that would be much better because I don't know that there's any language in the charter at all that says you're not going to meet unless we tell you you can. Now, it, it would be better if, we, if they coordinated it somehow with us as we are going to do the following and go through the liaison, which comes back to the board, and if we, anybody here objects to uh, looking into the following, then we, we send word back through the liaison and say, We're not, we don't want to do that. Sounds like an awful lot of work as well, if I may, Madam Chair, and I'll, I'll add to that. I, I understand where you're going. In practice, I don't think it will well, be. Well, I understand where you're going. I respect where you're going. In the interest of time, I would say that if, if we, if, in the conversation we had on the phone, where I was giving you the history of, in real time, what was actually happening currently. I'm aware, too. One of the things I mentioned and one of the things we discussed is that agenda items that were put forward by certain individuals never made the agenda. So the only way to control the agenda, to get information from the select, to, back to the select board for relevant information that the select board is looking for advisement on, council made it very clear it should be the directive should be coming from the select board now i'm not really disagreeing or agreeing with you here i'm i <laughs> then i'm not happy or unhappy 
Um, Steve, Steve, we announced early on we are not taking public comment. We have, they have a quorum. done. They have a quorum. No. Plus you have a quorum. No, no discussion. Thank you. I don't know. Did you want to speak? I lost track of us. Is there any workable way for you to imagine? Because I disagree about how that agenda th uh, stuff worked. Because I didn't get any email that was alleged to have gone out uh, over an agenda item. Okay. I think at the end of meetings, I, I'm a fan of agenda building at the end. And say, okay, what do you want on the next month's agenda? Without discussing anything other than what do you want? Mm -hmm. and, and agenda build kind of like we've done in the past uh, and if you see something that's a red flag that's fine but I think they need the opportunity to agenda build uh, and, and we don't know what problems exist uh, you might because you're out in the course Mary and I are, are, are not there uh, I mean my golf experience is is informed by a windmill at the 18th hole uh, and this really isn't about golf at this point no, yeah, I get that. And that's what I'm trying to resolve is that it, it's a paradigm shift and it would evolve. That's an awful lot of work. It revolved us telling every committee that we have, here's what your agenda is going to be for this month or, or next month because we have a concern about this or that. And I don't want to get in that business of doing that. There's no point in having committees if we, if we do that. I would love to be able to have the agenda build and have the liaisons be the conduit to say, Wait a second now, that's not what we would want to have happen, so hold off on that. We're, I want to go back to the select board for instructions. I mean, that would okay. be reasonable. But I can't see waiting for instructions specifically. That's what hang, I, I've said this to you before. That's what hangs me up here is if they are only a reflection of what we desire, then there's no point in their existing. It's just us. We could hold hearings. Well, don't forget it would be information that the liaison gets from the director of golf, the superintendent of golf, and other public people to drive the agenda, which in fact is all-encompassing. Which is fine, too. And that's the point. But if it precludes any action, that's why I asked the question. If they're, they're holding a meeting, precludes any uh, action to agenda anything, or to hold any meetings unless we instruct them first, there's no point in the conduct part because nobody can actually act as a, as a committee because they didn't meet on anything. Okay. Well, I... What's your pleasure, Jeff? I made a motion that's been seconded. Motion's been seconded. Any I further think. conversation? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 3-1, Joe. I, I would ask the committee if you'd just stay for one second now that we have a charge voted i i would you don't ask have to if you don't want to yeah if you don't want to stay don't, don't. Want to stay you don't have to stay but i would ask that you all look at the charge and take some thought to thinking about if you have the ability to operate within that charge that's all i'm asking thank you for your participation but they can't deliberate amongst each other you, yes um Please, uh, no deliberation. Martha, you can't deliberate amongst each other about your recommendations. Okay, next item. I believe this is you, Joe. Discussion on uh, May, correct. May 6, uh, 2024 annual meeting. Uh, it is, in fact, Madam Chair, and thank you. So what, um, what you have under item B is actually three subtopics. Um, uh, and it culminates in the uh, budget message, which um, I need to be more accurate. The charter refers to actually as a general policy statement uh, that I assist the board in creating, and then we move forward. However, um, as we uh, progress towards town meeting, um, there are some um, required actions to check off the box. Uh, that would be first a uh, B1 is supposed to read a current financial assessment. Um, that is a requirement uh, for me to present uh, to you folks. Um, as you can see in the packet, uh, we have some commentary or narrative provided by the finance director. Uh, additionally, I have provided um, some graphical interpretations of existing data. So the first one you see is the current financial assessment of fiscal year 24 as of September 26th from the finance director, and then in the package you can see a document that reads as general fund revenue and expenditures 
for fiscal year 2024. And um, the second one ties to the um, five-year financial outlook, um, which is, um, uh, or should be, the 2025 projection. But I think you may have a different cup. In any event, um, I'm required to give you that assessment. You're required to create a policy message, and we continue on with our efforts. Um, we uh, are now in the second quarter of fiscal year uh, 2024, but we know we won't have uh, hard data from fiscal year, uh, excuse me, quarter one of the fiscal year. So if you rely upon the FY 2024 document, that's just a recap. Um, but see, these are documents that have been provided to me through the Department of Revenue's Division of Local Services. So I think it's helpful just to see where we're at as far as uh, general revenue um, funds and uh, funding sources that were anticipated at town meeting this past May and the expenditures that were uh, also uh, contemplated back in May. Uh, you match that up with uh, the information from our finance director uh, and I think, generally speaking, uh, what we're saying is that we are not aware of any major disruptions. Uh, everything generally is on track, as one would expect, uh, with the first quarter almost completely completed, completely completed, excuse me, uh, completed uh, and analyzed uh, a little bit later. So that would be the financial assessment to then dovetail to the five-year financial outlook. Uh, as I've mentioned to you before, again, with the Department of Revenue, um, I'm working with our finance director, with representatives from Division of Local Services. I think the value statement there is these are the folks that our finance director needs to report to regularly. They have the data. Uh, and as I did with the capital outlay plan a few years ago, now trying to get us to dovetail with the language and the layout that they use. And so as an example of that, if you look at the fiscal year 2025, the projections uh, key distinctions on that, again, these are projected. These are still being analyzed with other um, data sources such as debt and what have you. Um, but you can see that if things just were uh, generally left to their own devices, um, you know, we, don't, we won't know what uh, free cash or uh, state aid will be for fiscal year 25. Uh, we don't know everything about the levy limit in 25 because of new growth. But... Um, what you can see could be incremental changes. All of which leads me to the, my recommendation and the language I put in my memorandum to you folks to assist in your efforts uh, for building a budget message. And so um, I have some other documents I can rely upon, but if I could just go to that document, um, my recommendation to you in that document is one of moderation. <coughs> um, you know, the finance director and I uh, know that um, we are progressing towards key events like the setting of the tax rate uh, later this fall. Uh, and as was mentioned much earlier this evening about free cash, the free cash certification process. Um, additionally, however, uh, Capital Outlay has already begun their process. They met on September 20th. And department heads are going to be submitting the new year only, which is fiscal year 2029 requests um, by October 13th so that the Capital LA Committee can add that column. And then we're going to go back and look at all the other years that are there, 25 through 28, uh, and evaluate modifications, new projects, whatever the case may be. Um, so right now, I think comparison year over year, where we know we had um, some wastewater-related uh, projects last year, uh, where we were just under $78 million, we're looking at a capital plan right now for fiscal year 25, that's slightly over $20 million. Um, so my recommendation and my memo to you uh, is that the town take a moderate approach and a moderate approach to me would be working within the levy limit. So uh, certainly within the, what is available to us under the levy, levy limit of two and a half percent and beyond that really what can be budget busters or really changing the whole equation is enhancement of services. Now, I think um, I've often said how timing uh, is usually very fortunate. I think that is still the case. You heard some uh, impassioned pleas uh, earlier today about programming and the rec department and um, not necessarily programming, but changes in how we would handle 
um, elections at town meeting and the voting mechanisms therein. Uh, we may be able to rely upon money to do that um, within fiscal year 24. Um, however, my, def my fallback would be to assume that we can do something like that in fiscal year 25 as we build the budget. Regardless, these are the conversations that we're going to begin in earnest after you develop your budget message, budget policy tonight. Okay. Um, Joe and I have had a couple of conversations on this, and, and I, I agree with him. I think the town was very good to us the last couple of years. We funded two key positions um, two years ago, and then last year, I don't know if it was eight or nine new positions. <laughs> I can't see all those fingers done. Nine. <laughs> nine, nine, some part time, but not nine positions last year. And my thought, this is the year to give our uh, taxpayers a little bit of a break and not, and maybe not go to our two and a half percent. Maybe we can go to one percent or one and a half percent. So that's the conversation Joe and I have had in trying to uh, give the taxpayers a break. Don. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is. This may be where Mr. McCaskill and I start teaming up again. Um, through the years, it's been no secret that he and I are kind of like conservative on this. I personally am really concerned, uh, so I would rather take a conservative approach rather than a moderate approach because I know we've settled our contracts, but that doesn't mean when we buy things that they're not going to be more expensive. And the rate of inflation seems to be modifying somewhat but the year-over-year -year inflation is, is like, you know, profound. It's, it's in double digits. And we cannot presume, especially when you heard some of those people, I mean, they're on the ground. Some of those people that were talking about Reckon Youth, which, by the way, has a revolving fund, and I just thought I'd throw that in there so that there is a mechanism. Um, the, they're, uh, they're telling us they're hurting right now I mean, because it's not a great economic time. If, uh, they make $5 more a week. The stuff they're buying is costing them $15 more a week. Uh, so we're not going to be in a position to ask for anything big, big, uh, even if it looks like, well, we've been doing that for the last few years. Everything we had assumed about stability uh, in the national economy is, is out the window over the last couple of years. So it, we, we could presume that there'd be a 2% inflation rate year over year, year over year, year over year. That's gone. So I, I wouldn't want... Uh, to get to the point where we spend out what we're doing. I mean, I'm a big fan of st uh, stabilization funds and, and hanging on to money just in case. As a matter of fact, during COVID, uh, Jeff, you weren't here. The stabilization fund bailed us out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we were able to pay it back. Very proud of that, too. We didn't, we didn't just take it and just run with it. Uh, I don't, it's not a real great mechanism. Uh, so OPEB paying, in the, you know, paying down our uh, employee benefits and creating more stabilization money would be big goals for me as a conservative approach to this stuff because I'm not sure that we're going to actually collect what we're projecting. Anyone else? Julie's not here, so I'd say I agree with Don. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll put it on a recording for her. I, th I, think, uh, I think the approach is exactly what you outlined. I think it's time to yeah. take a look back. And I know there's another... Um, topic related to projects. 55% of them are waiting for initiation. And I hope that this board is very cautious about what it approves this year. And I don't want to handicap department heads, but there's an awful lot of questions that we're not getting answered. There's an awful lot of constituent uh, issues that we're not getting answered. There's an awful lot of time from our assistant town administrator, and I will ask the question of Joe when we get to it, department heads. <clears throat> on past procurement, which really, really, really dates back. So on top of the budget message, um, I would like to include something in the budget message about capital items because it's going to have to be really important for me to vote for it this year, given where we sit and what we're up against because of where we sit. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? What's up? <laughs> I agree. Okay. Anything more, Joe? Well, the charter requires you folks uh, on it before the first Tuesday to establish that general policy statement. 
Uh, is there something that you'd be uh, willing and able to turn into a vote tonight that I can start distributing and uh, building on for the department heads? I, I didn't mention that we did have a uh, uh, more than two hour meeting last week to go through all facets of the uh, budget process. I also just want to put out there that beyond the five year outlook that we're also looking at uh, generally is the, on, uh, the operating budget, the capital plan, and then I think to what members were also talking about is potential uh, warrant ar articles, whether they have appropriating articles, uh, excuse me, appropriations or not. So this would be the time to get um, a statement from the board uh, or soon thereafter okay. to disseminate to the troops. John? Thank you, Madam Chair. The problem I have with that is we'd have to do it in real time and construct something that's a, that we're going to live with uh, moving on. It's our budget statement, and then that goes to the town administrator who constructs a budget underneath that budget statement that's consistent to it. Unless you want to claim authorship of exactly what he's got here and say, that's what I'm proposing, it, we, I wouldn't mind breaking uh, a little bit the rule uh, to wait one more week to have th this be your uh, document. And Michael's been very good at drafting these over the last couple of years. This, this really this is a tricky year, is what I've been saying you know, from the beginning of the conversation. I'm not sure how abundant the revenues are going to be, and it really is important that we come up with the right budget statement so everybody knows. Uh, but, and I think we need to be aggressive. Michael's right. That's another subject. But you know what? If we're not going to finish any of these things, and if they're not that important, if they're so unimportant that they wait two years, maybe three years, maybe it's time to think about swiping the money back and re rerouting it to something more urgent, uh, unless we can get our act together and actually do what we said we were going to do. Okay, Michael. My only comment is it's, uh, this has been a long conversation about changing timelines and we have been trying to get things done quicker. Without a draft, I don't believe we could even come up with this real time. No. Um, I would like to see the chair, and I would be happy to work with the chair, propose for our next meeting a draft that we could then modify at that meeting and then give to the town administrator, recognizing we will be late. That's what okay. I was recommending, so if you would be willing yep. to take them up on That's it. fine. Jeff. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would support that, being the first time I'm going through this. For, for me, words matter. And if our message goes out and we don't live up to that message, or it, it, it's very important for me that we all understand, I believe we do, that, that words matter and we need to put out the right message that we can live up to. So I'm in favor of, of waiting until we can put something together that, that we all agree on. Madam Chair, might I suggest that there's a consensus on the board to work with Mr. McCaskill on uh, the message because he's done it a whole bunch of times in a very conservative way. It sounded like an excellent suggestion. Do we need a motion? We need a motion? So. Is that, did it's that just happen? Nobody, right. nobody here is objecting, right? Yep. We, we don't no need a motion. Can. Joe, you look perplexed. That's a, that, no, that's no. a board thing, so. Oh, okay. Right. All right. John? Are you taking any questions at all? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's a great topic. It's okay. I'm still John Mary. Chory. John Chory, uh, 150 Gorma. Just a couple very quick questions. Uh, in the packet, was there an FY25 pie chart, Joe? No, I think I misspoke. I think, I misspoke. I there, think was there was fiscal years 23 and 24. Right. But I thought I saw you wave a 25. Say again? I thought I saw you wave a 25. Yeah, I'm going to add that. that. Again, it's a draft uh, projected. It's nowhere near close. No, but, but I can add that. But that's not in the packet then. I, I no, just, I don't believe so. I okay. believe 23 and 24. It was in your, okay, because I saw you wave something. I'd like to, to see that. Uh, anyway, 1% uh, towards the 2.5% increase is a good thing, Mary. I think maybe that's a good thing to strive if we can. I know there's contract obligations and things that might prohibit that, but we should try at least. Uh, project list, Michael, board, Joe, especially Joe, it's a great list. On, great start on that project list. When I was working with the project list, it was over 100 units on that. I think you're down to about 70 now. Great, great step because the cost, like uh, Mr. Harrell has uh, said, inflation is really eaten on those project things. Uh, last one, it wasn't mentioned at all yet, but uh, I know Michael's worked on it a lot, is uncollected property taxes. Yeah, I'd like to know where we stand on that. Not tonight, but maybe it's an agenda item. That number, last time I looked, was about $7.5 million. 
I know we could approve money to get tax people in here. I know it's a good thing Michael's been working hard on doing that. I'd like to see where we are on that. Uh, thank you. Thank you, John. Mary. <coughs> yes, Michael. Just on that, John, we'll, there'll be a meeting soon with the tax, with the finance director. I met with her today to establish some parameters of that meeting. 7.328 million, I believe, is the number. 800,000 for Judah Eldridge comes off the top on that. And we have made some pretty good progress in other back taxes already. And if the board approves the contract tonight, we'll start working with Gail, our last vendor, um, as early as tomorrow. Uh, putting maps on and trying to find properties. So Great, thank you. And, and will that be an agenda item for a uh, selecting meeting? We can certainly uh, put the tax recap on as an agenda item, and I might be able to give Mary language on the other part after Kathleen and myself and other department heads meet per direction of the board. Great, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, project updates, Joe. Thank you. Um, so in your packet, you have the memorandum. Um, from the assistant town administrator updating uh, both the numbers and the plan itself. Um, I think it was as mentioned before, uh, we're now at um, uh, 38 projects awaiting initiation, uh, which is more, just more than half of the 69 that are there. Um, I think the uh, positive news is the uh, 10 projects that are in the IFB or RFP process with an additional 14 that were contract awarded and six in the final step. Um, and I don't know if there's a reference to the one that went back to square one, um, but that may have been a uh, fact that there was no, um, yep, so that is the uh, update historic property inventory. And I think the dollar amount that was provided is not sufficient to what the responses are coming back on so that means it has to come back for additional funding um, we could try again I think one of the things I'd want to do I think that was through the historic district historical Commission is to um, perhaps reevaluate what it was we were looking for in the marketplace to see if we can get something um, through that dollar amount otherwise we could either rescind as uh, member Howell was saying um, uh, and use the funds elsewhere or uh, potentially have an appropriating article seeking more funds. Okay, thank you. Any other? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just, um, first of all, commend uh, Megan Eldridge, Assistant Town Administrator, um, and not that I'm not commending the Town Administrator for the work, but her name is on all of these procurements that we're getting. Um, so I know she's driving that and doing an awful lot of work. Um, with that, I have some questions uh, for the town administrator, and, and I guess the, uh, I guess there'll be a point in the end of this, but the, let me look at, uh, look on John Rendon, because he's in the audience. Uh, second paragraph, 2016, facility maintenance fund harbor dredging, procurement awaiting initi initiation. Now, when I think about harbor and dredging, I think about John Rendon. Uh, and as a boater, the amount of dredging we do and the fact that we sell the sand is amazing. And we usually uh, not make money because we can't, but we offset our costs on that. Why do we have an article, and that's one of many that I can question, but I'm, I'm going to spare everybody that tonight and ask the town administrator to bring this back uh, in the next week or two with an explanation on how we're going to move forward faster. But, John, I guess that would be a question to you. Why does that item sit on this procurement list when we dredge every year? And why is it not in your name? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, John Rendon, Harbor Master. So, um, in 2016 and prior, I don't remember the exact year, but I used to have to go and ask for funds to dredge through town meeting every year. And finally, uh, I was able to get dredge funded in our operating budget. So now I have $150,000 every year in my operating budget to pay for, for dredging. So we've been very successful at getting um, grant funds through the state, 
and between that and my operating budget, I've been able to uh, pay our, our dredge costs. This 2016 article still has funds available that I would like to keep intact that was approved for channel dredging and permitting that we haven't used, bet, used yet, but I tell you, it, it gives me and I think the town a, a backstop if we have a situation where we exceed our, our dredge costs because you know, you never know when a channel is going to fill in. You could have a terrible winter. It could be. So that's why it's in there, and I would hope that it stays in there. Thank you, John. Okay. Appreciate and, and if I can just, while I'm up here, uh, I see a waiting initiation, and then I, I'm not sure the definition. I guess projects haven't started yet. Is that what it means? Well, Round Cove's done, and Sacquatucket Landside Project's done, and it's listed as a waiting initiation. So... I think we're doing maybe better than, well, in those instances than I think we are. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, through you, Mary, to Joe, on those two projects. So that was uh, Round Cove boat ramp, John? Yes, sir. Yep. And that was 2017, and Sacquatucket Harbor landslide improve, landslide. Um, if I could then, um, those dollar amounts, have you seen the packet? Do you know if the dollar amounts referenced are accurate? Uh, I had it up on my phone. I don't know if I can get it. One, if I can just make you, one more statement. You can borrow my copy if that'll help. Thank you. And I found kind of circled in green. Okay, so. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, Round Cove boat ramp is totally done, and that money's been expended. And uh, so I, 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 um, the money listed there, I don't remember if exactly is, is, is that what we spent or not. I, I don't remember. I have my file. But that has been completed, that. and yep. that money should be taken off. And then the, you know, the Sacramento land side, obviously that's been done, and that $3 million was the correct amount. Maybe that's still on there because we had some funds left over that I was hoping to be able to come to you when we were ready to. I've been working with Sean Libby on the whole emergency generator for the facility, and we have, I think, 70000 remaining in that account that I was hoping to put towards that. So Thank you, John. Thanks. Uh, and that's where I was going with that. There would be a suggestion and a question at the end Thanks, for the John. town administrator, but thank you. Um, the... Next, and, and I'm not going to bore everybody with going through this whole list, but um, Joe, and I'm looking at public works, and, and I don't want to pick on them because I did last week. There's an awful lot of uninitiated projects, and, and one that I see that belongs to facilities would be the uh, carpet at the town hall and, and community center, and, and I wonder why we're not looking at um, others in this town that might be trained in procurement and not asking for help. You know, that this particular one falls into, one of them, half of them falls into a building that we have a very capable director. A and I'm more interested in finishing, and then to my questioning of the harbor master, I'm more interested in knowing what's left, what's not needed, and how we're going to reappropriate it. And what I don't want to do is what we always do. We just voted tonight to extend our budget message out, which is going to put the department heads behind. I don't want to wait until the last minute again to have the conversation about reappropriation. What portion of this list can we get rid of, and what resources do we have so that Megan's not doing all the procurement? Through you to the town administrator. Joe. Yeah, so first two, if I heard it correctly, 2018 um, annual town meeting, Article 10 community center and town hall carpet replacement. Um, assuming those numbers are still accurate and valid, um, I believe the commentary about the town hall part of it is that um, there was work that was already done, but the numbers uh, don't reflect that. So I'd have to go back and look at that. Um, I will defer to our director on the community center project. However, to the point about anyone that is um, able to do procurement, I would argue that all of our department heads are able to do procurement. 
um, but I know some are formally trained and much better at it, um, and we don't have any objection to any of that. Uh, when we streamlined the process, I think three years ago, that was part of the effect, is to try to streamline it and get it moving. The only caveat I would want to put out there is, um, and it's simple to, to do, but we'd need to verify the manner in which the article and the motion were written. Um, it may be that we cannot repurpose in the manner that um, the harbor master or the director or someone else may want without a, a clarifying article. So we can do it if the language is already sufficient enough. If it's not, we can do it through an article at town meeting. So that'd be an article that um, reappropriates rather than just appropriates. Through you, Madam Chair, and I and promise I'll stop asking questions. <laughs> Let me just clarify that. So in that case, the example that uh, John spoke about with the dredging, since that was dredging money, he could use that this year if he needed more than what he had. Is that correct? Yes, I agree with the way that the harbor master said that. Yeah. that okay. you know, and I think the great phrase is the backstop. Um, the one that may be problematic, although not necessarily, if we're looking, if there's funds left over on the Sacquatucket Marina project, um, we should be able to make the argument that the generator falls under that. Thank you. Michael. Um, so I would just ask the town administrator to look through this list, work with uh, department heads that are on there, uh, i.e. John made two great arguments, and then we can get rid of waiting initiation and make that 55% or waiting initiation a much lower number with an explanation to the public and to the board which we may be able to use during capital request time this year and yep. during budget process this year. Uh, and, and I want to put it publicly, I was at the community center, the carpet desperately needs to be repaired uh, and it would be great to empower that department head to be able to at least start the uh, procurement uh, if she's willing. <laughs> Jeff. Thank you. Uh, Joe, just a general question. I was watching a meeting last week. Uh, another department head was talking about um, fence, I believe, and how, the, how the, the bid that he got two years ago is not going to cut it now. So just for me to understand a little bit better what I'm looking at here, if I count these up, there's like maybe 12 or 13 that are over four years old. And I can't imagine that the bid then would even be remotely close to the bid now, seeing as how everything's changed in the last four years. Do we send, can we look at some of these and rebid them and find out exactly what the accurate, accurate today dollar amount would be to get some of these done? So we certainly can, and we don't necessarily have to do bids. Um, okay. One of the things we do as part of our procurement process is assess the marketplace, so to speak. Mm. That is, what are you contemplating for a project, and what do you believe the marketplace says is the cost? That's how we do it on a go-forward basis. When we have funds that are already out there, we need to test the market again to see, is this still sufficient? Mm. Um, however, one of the things that I've done and will continue to do is ask department heads, um, one of the exercises we've done um, the last three years is run the Munis report saying here is, as of this printing, all of these other appropriated articles and the current balances. Why wouldn't I use those leftover funds? Mm -hmm. And so we do have some narratives like you've heard from the Harbor Master. Uh, I think that you've heard from the library director. Um, so the last exercise that I did was over the summer and the answers came back solid that we need it and we're going to do something with it. Um, however, our procurement process, I think, is nimble enough where, um, you know, that's, that's square one on that list of categories, and most of them aren't square one. Most of them are sufficient. Um, I can think of, well, I can't think of it now, I just drew a blank, but there was one project um, from o more than a year ago where we revived it, we went out to bid, it was insufficient. Um, we went back to town meeting, got more money. Of course, a great example of that is Brooks Academy, but that's mm -hmm. not the one I was thinking. There was, however, a situation where when we went out to bid a year ago, uh, the marketplace was way too high. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have an appropriating article in place for town meeting. Mm -hmm. We tried it again, and the marketplace was much better. 
Okay. So, you know, that's where that awaiting initiation is. If the department head's ready to proceed with the project, we are too. Let's then try it again. Thank you. Perfect. I think this list would look a lot better if we could take, like those three that our harbor master talked about, change awaiting initiation to uh, remaining money to be used, and then we don't need to talk about it. Don. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just want to remind everybody, especially the new guy here, uh, if you can't finish the project with the money that's been appropriated, you can't initiate the project either. Uh, it, uh, John's situation is really unique because he can t he can talk about something being analogous and the money is mm -hmm. purpose-driven into the same place so we can add it back in uh, to do it. But most other things are pretty specific and you can't say, well, that's okay, we'll do three quarters of the building. Uh, of course. You, know, you can't do that. Yep. So these may be perpetually awaiting uh, without another article, or, and then you have to ask yourself, is it something we want to put out there? Right. Yep, thanks, Joe. Joe? Um, if I could first respond to what you said, Madam Chair, we will absolutely have another category added, that is uh, remaining money to be used. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great idea, and I, I think you're right. I think it's gonna change the way we look at the form and how the form looks. Uh, and then to what uh, Member Howell was just saying, uh, remember with our process, what we have is a pre-procurement checklist. And so other than say construction projects, um, this is the, for 30B, the vast majority of what we do, um, a department head cannot go forward until they've done the pre-procurement uh, checklist. And it doesn't get to me unless and until the accounting department or the finance director has said, you've told us what it is, you told us where the funding was, you've told us your scope of services, and that gets to a comment earlier about how we look for the marketplace, they can't go forward until Kathleen signs it and then it comes to me and they can't go forward until I sign it. Because if they do not have the funding, um, there is no procurement. Mm -hmm. That was for Jeff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, any more on uh, procurement? Uh, select board meeting schedule. In the packet, um, you'll see a a proposed set of dates, and this is uh, brought to you by your admin team, who is pretty eloquent that they can get a lot more accomplished if we don't meet every week. I called around, I didn't call around, I uh, went online and looked, and several towns meet every other week. One of them meets three out of four, but a bunch of them meet every other. The only one I saw that meets weekly, which surprised me, was Chatham. They meet weekly, except in the July and August, they go to every other. So what I asked Danielle to do is to just pick some dates, putting two regular meetings each month and one working session. And then if we find we need that third meeting, we pop it in. If we don't have anything for a working session, it can take that week or the other week. So that's what I would propose um, going forward. At the request of your favorite people down in the corner. Don. Thank you, Madam Chair. I believe that we already gave you that authority uh, last year. Yeah, we, except for the budget season, we said that uh, we meet no, no less than uh, every other week. So you have, I mean, unless something comes up uh, and we can't know that, uh, the schedule looks fine. I mean, and it, okay. we get to establish our own policy of meetings, and Michael, help me here. Didn't we vote on that to, to allow us to do it? Not I as thought, a, not I a thought. Matter of, not a matter of policy. What we did yeah. was we had a, a schedule presented to us in September, and we agreed to bring this back Correct. in October the talk uh, to look at it. Now, with, with what Don said, and looking at this and, and uh, in fear of uh, Danielle, uh, <laughs> I, I legitimate fear. <laughs> it concerns me, and and tonight we heard from uh, at least a dozen people with at least a dozen more behind them about some problems in Rec and Youth that we're going to have to take up. Um, today I met with the chair of the uh, uh, Water Commissioners, Water Wastewater Commissioners. There's three target dates that are coming up that include Planning Board, and um, uh, sorry to surprise you with this tonight and um, Zoning Board of Appeals and and those are things that the wastewater uh, commissioners 
uh, have to work through uh, town administrator as well as getting um, a set of eyes since we do not have a planner or an engineer at this point to make sure the applications are correct which would be another agenda mm -hmm. item that I'm going to ask you for sooner than later because we are up against a wall on that as well as easements for pump stations. I could go on and on and on and on and given the amount of open procurements I don't see uh, and we just we just voted to push out our um, budget message which we won't even be able to bring back now until October 16th. As for the working sessions go uh, I think those should be regular meetings at this point at very least because we're looking at having a meeting October 16th and then not another one until November 6th. That's three weeks without a public meeting. I don't know how we do that, given the amount of work that we have to do. And believe me, I would love to have some time off. But given the amount of work, and, and then there's the looming questions. There's the, the Brooks Park question that sits in the town administrator's hand about whether or not the procurement process is followed, and, that, and I'm going to bring that up under Selectman's report. And, and somebody could then sublease for profit. There is the um, Samoset Road stuff that's going. There's a lot of things the board's working on. And I don't see, without having four hour meetings, which by hour two, two and a half, um, how awake are we? How much are we, how much are we uh, voting on without proper discussion because we're trying to rush through a meeting? And I know that happened last year. I would much rather see us cancel meetings. If the chair decides there's not enough to put on an agenda and that it can slide to a week out, I would much rather see that. I don't think the town of Harwich right now with everything that we have going on and getting prepared for budget season and capital requests and capital outlay can handle not meeting. And I don't want to, so I can't support it. Jeff? I have two quick thoughts. These meetings for me are invaluable. I learned so much being here and and getting the feel of, of how this this town's operating and number two I'm here to work so I I would prefer to meet every week that 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 would be my okay my, my, my Don thank you madam chair there is a third possibility I mean that we're not looking at here at least to use uh, judiciously uh, right now the working groups the way we have this set up we're not taking any votes we're not doing anything uh, in terms of receiving any kind of input or anything there is the possibility of creating a, a number of single subject meetings where all things relating to wastewater could be in one, where you could still have a meeting, maybe an additional one or two items there, but clear out everything that you want to talk about relative to that and do other things. But I, I'm listening to you and I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying and you're probably right that we don't want to just you know, go on a perpetual vacation because <laughs> things are already kind of mounting up on us in terms of the budget. I don't want to be in March and still have to worry about printing a warrant and we haven't voted everything. I hear you. My thought was that this would help that process by giving the staff more time. To, I don't see that it's, it's our work alone. It comes from the staff. So that was my belief. If they had more time to get things done, there would be less issues coming at us from other angles. Joe, do you want to uh, weigh in? Um, sure. I, I think you've articulated well uh, where the team's coming from. And I don't think it's lost on any of you folks that when you meet in a working group session where there's less pressure on the team, I'm still with you. So we are meeting regularly in whatever form um, that you do that. Um, I think Selectman Howell's suggestion that uh, and if I heard it right, I think maybe we pivot to the working group sessions being single so item sessions. Mm -hmm. So you could do a deeper dive um, on a Monday night into budget issues or uh, however that comes up, you know, tying into some of the comments tonight. Um, I, I think we're getting a lot done, uh, but perception is reality. Whatever the board uh, meets is when I'll meet. Um, I think you've articulated well for the team, but if the board wants us to go back to your regular meetings, that's exactly what we'll do. Okay. I, I hear the consensus is to go weekly, so let's do that. And as Michael suggested, if we don't have enough to make a decent meeting, we'll cancel. And I, I too, like Don's idea, let's make it a single topic um, 
sing single topic uh, meeting, meeting at some point. Correct. Yeah. But that, I think, would still give admin a little more freedom if there's just one topic and they're not putting together a full array of items. So if I understand, Madam Chair, yes. if I understand that right, it would be a regular posted meeting where votes could be taken Correct. but look like what the working sessions had looked like. Deep, deep dive into deep the dive budget, into deep one. dive yep. into right. water, waste water, sure. deep dive into yep. whatever. Sure. Just wanted to be clear on my end. Sign it up for. Well, and to, and to <laughs> Michael. that, Matt, Mary, you do the, um, the agenda every week if it looks light. You cancel it. Yeah, okay. We've done that. We did that last year several times at different times of the year. So right. if it doesn't look like there's anything that we need to discuss, meeting. cancel it. And then to the working open session, uh, whatever we're going to call that now, there's no reason in that we couldn't put a consent agenda so that people aren't waiting two weeks for a promotion or people aren't waiting two yep. weeks for a permit or people aren't waiting. We could put a consent agenda on that mm -hmm. as well as any emergency topics that come up. Because really, it's uh, also a matter of uh, getting things approved for department heads. Uh, and there's a lot of requests from department heads. And, and I don't mm -hmm. personally, and thank you, Mary, for the concession, I don't see the reason to make people wait. Okay, let's do that. Question would be then, when, what do you consider to be your next meeting and when? Um, <laughs> my next meeting will be October 23rd. <laughs> So uh, that question will be when Julie's next meeting is. Um, uh, if I may. Yes. Uh, October 16th is what's scheduled. And uh, I may have a conflict next week as well. <laughs> I, I, no, listen. Um, <laughs> I'm there's three other board members. Is, it, is, so this, is this, this hunting season? She's not here. I'll be running um, with myself with me. But my that, question really. You would be. <laughs> my question really is to Joe. And it's really related to the budget message, which is one of the most important things that we do in preparation of building a budget. Shouldn't we have a budget message on the meeting on the 10th so that Joe can get it to the department heads as quickly as he can so they can do their jobs? Or is it okay with the town administrator to wait until the 16th? I'm not seeing a 10th here. There is no 10th. No, but we can put it back in. This uh, was just This is proposed. assuming the two-week schedule, which we just said we weren't going to do. That's a really important meeting the budget message because it forms everything I'm sorry but it does so what what are you suggesting that should be the 10th it should be like I said Michael's proficient at it. I'm sure he could scare up the last two and cobble together with you something that would work I said I was gonna help Mary I didn't say I was gonna scare him <laughs> <laughs> you've got um, it in your computer already and you, you can update I, it yeah. I get the importance of the budget meeting from a, um, what do I want to call it, uh, as a show of our commitment to the budget and where we want to go. But I really do not believe that Joe is just sitting there twiddling his thumbs until he gets this message. I mean, he's building the budget as we speak. So I don't think we're slowing him down with a budget message. You know what it's going to look like. It's going to look like the last two or three years with me throwing in one or one and a half percent. It's not, I, I don't think I'm writing the latest bestseller here. I, I don't either, but I do believe Joe is not going to do a budget message to the department heads until he has ours in writing. Am I wrong? Um, <laughs> not you, Madam Chair? Not, <laughs> not wrong. Um, you're at a public meeting. I use the word moderation and two and a half, and the board was clear. And, and I take that direction. Uh, we're going to be more conservative than that. And that gives me more than enough to start tomorrow on what I'm doing. Um, it helps me greatly with the concept on capital plan uh, changes for 25, et cetera. Um, one of the things I would put out there is if there are three members next week, I think there's greater value in five members coalescing around a message that is certain rather than three-fifths of you doing it with different parties here and not here. So I have enough, I feel I have enough direction to begin um, putting out the marching orders on um, a budget that reflects uh, all of the comments that you've mentioned and that is more conservative. Okay, and I, I think it was my misunderstanding. I thought when you did your budget message, that was our budget message. 
I can certainly draft something tomorrow and get it to Michael and we can at least get this moving. But I think if you're comfortable with consensus of where we're at with conservatism, I think we're good. So I guess the biggest question on the table through you, Madam Chair, is whether or not we're going to meet on the 10th or if our next meeting is going to be the 16th. And I'm fine with the 10th because I'm probably not going to be here. <laughs> I'm also a fan <laughs> of having every week meetings, as stated previously. So I don't know what's uh, on the agenda, but if we want to give staff a one-week break before we go back to weekly, then I'll support that. Okay, which week aren't you here? The 10th or the 16th? Tenth. The 10th. Tenth. Tenth. Then maybe we leave the 10th alone and make our next meeting the 16th. How's that? And then go to weekly from And then go to weekly. Either way, I have no life. I'll be here. And meanwhile, you might I be sick. <laughs> <laughs> or surgery. Or could be on your boat. <laughs> or maybe on my boat. And I'll have that budget message ready for Julie that she can present it while I'll be toasting you from... Europe, how's that? And not taking us there? And what? And not taking us there? Not taking you, no. Oh. Okay, mm. we got the schedule. Madam Chair, would it be okay to take one out of order? Sure. Could we do contract A to allow the department head to go home? We certainly may. I, make, I move that we approve a construction contract agreement with TW Nickerson Inc. for Wixing Landing improvements in the amount of 95500 Second. Any discussion? Yes. I have a question, please. Mark Kelleher, Gordon Ritchie Road, West Harwich. Um, I just have one request of the Harbor Master that this Wixon plan is presently constituted blocks access to the water on the north side of Wixon Pier. There's going to be riprap, which if you've ever been down Allen Harbor, it's tough to walk over. Um, right now, the way the plan is constituted, you have to enter the water on the north side of Wixon Pier, which is mud. I shellfish in the area, commercially shellfish, and I've sent John a, a video where I get stuck in the mud. So I, my request for the harbor master, at least initially, there's a couple of sizes of riprap. If you could possibly ask the contractor without the cost ramifications to use the smallest size riprap. They have four to five inch riprap. At least then, perhaps, people can access the water on the north side safely because um, I anticipate next year we'll take a look at it that we may have some issues with you know safe access to the water so that's my only request of the harbor master is to look at the smaller size riprap to use that without any cost ramifications thank you You're welcome John did you want to comment madam chair um, I, I think that's an engineering um, question and I'll I'll ask the engineer um, right now it calls for minimum 18 inch uh, stone um, I'm guessing there's a purpose for that I'm not an engineer but I'll certainly ask the question and if we can and if it's not cost prohibitive then we'll look at it great thank you very much um, did we have we had a motion, motion a and a second uh, any further discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. Uh, one abstain. Oh, one abstain? One abstain. You? Me. Okay. So you got that, Joe? Three yep. Thank and one you. abstain? Uh, back to new business. Um, approve a fee waiver request from, from WOMR for six signs for rockin' picnic in the park in the amount of $600. Does anyone want to discuss? And Madam Chair, you yes. do have uh, representatives uh, from WOMR uh, remotely. Um, okay. Our dear friend Sheila House, board president, and executive director John Braden, they're okay. available um, for any questions. Anyone have any questions? Want to make a motion? What's the pleasure of the board? I don't have the money. You don't have the money? Oh, yeah. yeah. So Michael can't do that to me. I, I have no questions, uh, Mary. Uh, we all know how I feel about fee waivers. There's a real cost to this, and um, I'm not going to change my okay. belief that the town needs to get its waiver money. I do um, have a comment after uh, this either gets voted or not. Okay. The only question, the only comment I wanted to make on it, it's a hundred dollars per sign, 
But that's for people that have signs for the whole year. This group is going to have a sign out for, I don't know, a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe a month. It doesn't seem fair that they should have to pay the same as a business that has it 365 days a year. So I would entertain at least a reduction for them. Anyone else? I guess my only comment on that is I don't believe it's $100 a year for annual signs only. I think our sign permit is the application process requires a $100 um, for any sign, for any amount of time. I do oh. appreciate what you said, and I was hoping a board member made that comment. Six hundred dollars for a for an event that is listed as free mm. uh, could be considered excessive, and I wonder if we could work with the building commissioner to um, narrow the application to one sign for the event. I believe, depending on where they're going to be, I would probably support a. 50% reduction because it is a free event to the community. They're not at being asked to purchase anything, uh, and it is a uh, seems to be a nonprofit. Nonprofit not being the key uh, because a lot of nonprofits come before us. As a matter of fact, there's one <coughs> coming up afterwards. But I do agree with you, Mary, that six sign permits and $600 does seem a bit excessive. Jeff. So my only question. To Selectman McCaskill would be, you said there's a cost associated to this. I, I understand, I'm just looking for clarification. I understand when there's a janitor involved or there's a town employee who's got to unlock and lock up after they leave. Where, do, where would we find a cost to this? Starts with Danielle. Okay. Yeah. Goes to building commission. Yeah, yeah, okay. I believe there's more involved. Okay, good. Thank you for that. Oh, Don. I'm going to give the yin to his yang you're, here. You're uh, too quiet. you got to kind of... Well, if you look at this at its base, I mean, because this is what Jeff was just asking, uh, and I'm the guilty party here of asking them to build their fees based on expended effort. Who touches it? How much they make per hour? How long does it take them? And, uh, the real cost of this is the application. It isn't the number of signs. It could be on the same application that you get the number of signs. So to process that application, it would seem to me $100 flat rate for the number for this particular thing would be a rationalization because they're not going to spend any more effort and any more time processing it because whoever it is that handles it is going to sign off on it and move it along, and they're going to get an approval from like the building commissioner and then move that along. I'd be willing you know, to, to go even lower than his three and go to 100 and say, okay, it's a processing fee. Is that a motion? I'll make a motion. If you want. Go ahead. Yeah. I move that we approve a $500 reduction in the sign fees. We'll call it a comprehensive sign permit <laughs> fee for six signs in the amount of $100. Second. Any discussion? Three, Madam Chair, to the town administrator. Is it six different applications, or can it be lumped onto one? Hence the comprehensive. Um, it was all on one. I don't understand the question. Sorry. They're one applying for six is sign six. permits. Is it six applications or one? I think it's one. No, it's. Um, I believe it's one. The fee schedule dictates one hundred dollars per sign, mm -hmm. not per application. I guess then, if I may ask a question to the applicant. Madam Chair? You may. Um, Sheila, is, is, are all of the signs going at Brooks Park? Uh, no, I think we were going to do um, like two on Oak Street. The way that Cranberry... You're cutting out, but I think you said the way the Cranberry Festival posts them? Yeah. Um, Main Street, uh, Sisson, and then Okay. I guess the question to the board is, um, we denied the Cranberry Harvest Festival's application. So now we're about to do, uh, and um, what do they call it? Comprehensive sign permit? Um, precedence. Precedence. Yeah. We already set a precedence, and now we're going to set a new one. 
What was the crim sorry, Madam Chairman? What was the what was the cranberry harvest? They apply for multiple signs, and we denied their waiver. I don't remember that. I don't remember that I don't either. Remember that. That's correct. That we did. Was it right. what? The recollection of Mr. McCaskill is correct. I knew it was correct. I just stated <laughs> it. <didn't laughs> right. I apologize. <laughs> I'll sit here and wait. So they wanted multiple signs and we charged them the full freight? No, is they, that correct? they wanted a waiver of the fees related to the signs and the board did not take that up or did not approve it. Well, I, until I read the sign uh, chart there or the sign policy hadn't given thought to instead of waiving, we could do... 50%. Don, I think you wanted to speak. Yeah, Madam Chair, through you. Uh, Sheila, when are the signs going up and coming down? Uh, we were thinking a week to two weeks, we'd take them down that day. You, you're cutting out again, but I think you said a week or two before the event and taking them down that day. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. And through you again, Madam Chair, what are you, what are you thinking in terms of how, uh, distance between all of the signs at the most extreme? That would be for you, Sheila. Oh, sorry. What was the <laughs> F the furthest apart signs? How far is that? Um. Well, I was, you know, the Cranberry Festival usually has one pair of Maine and Oak, and then one further down Oak, and then they're up and down Main Street, um, right, right about where Brooks Academy is. So from Brooks Academy to Brooks Park. The reason I asked that question is because of expended effort. I, if uh, the building inspector or whomever goes out, I'm not sure what the incremental amount of time would be to to look at them all because they're probably going to be within a mile of each other, you know, and and pretty close to being ground central here. So if you go from here to Main Street and then here up mm. Oak Street, I'm not sure we're asking him to, uh, or her to do like six hundred dollars worth of work. Right. If I may. wouldn't we be doing that? Don's referring to uh, him inspecting that. Y you'd be placing them, but the building commissioner would review them, I guess. And that's what this built into the fee, is the, the ability to have the building inspector make sure that they are in cons consistent with what you've asked for. Jeff, did you want to? Yeah, I just have two things. I, I think to m Mr. McCaskill's point, that sometimes setting precedent might be a good thing. And I think six signs at a hundred dollars a sign should be something that we look at and this might be a good way to begin a precedent um, if the board feels that way and Sheila I'll also offer uh, the handlers auto parts property uh, for your signs if you want to put them up there at no charge it's an extra hundred bucks <laughs> <laughs> you're making the bill that you, that you have further. to pay uh, then I'll pay and that could be considered a conflict of interest. yeah no we're not going to do that Sheila okay so where are we where are we we had a motion we had a motion for a hundred Motions for 100. We had a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed? Yeah. One. So 3-1, three, three, Joe. And I would like to um, bring this back. I mean, it's probably not the most pressing thing on our agenda, mm -hmm. but to look at the sign policy specifically for the nonprofits. I, I got to thinking when I read that um, the Cape Cod Chronicle has a separate rate for nonprofits, which was always very nice. Whatever the rate was, we paid 50% of it. And maybe we should look at doing some of that for our nonprofits and not have to discuss this every time. Don. Thank you, Madam Chair. If, so the, in part of that discussion should involve, because these fees, are, you've heard me say this a lot, is that I don't care what Dennis charges, I don't care what Brewster charges, I don't care what Chatham charges. It has to do with our expended uh, activity and what it costs us to do that. Do, what we really want out of them is a building block thing. Uh, so does it really cost us 100 bucks a sign if they're that close together and it's one event for like a weekend or whatever, and then it's down? Mm -hmm. 
but that would have to come from them to tell us, okay, how much effort are we expending and who's doing it? Them meaning the administrator. The inspector yeah. and, and yeah. Danielle and whomever yeah. touches a piece of paper. Yeah. Well, that can certainly be part of that discussion because we don't want to lose money on it. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. suggesting. Okay, thank you. So All is right. the clear, just to clarify that it's a hundred dollars? Is that what you just voted? Yes, we just voted okay. that it will be a hundred dollar fee for the six signs. Okay, we'll get a check to you and thank you so much. You're very welcome. Madam nice Chair. to see you, Sheila. Good yes. to see you. Madam, yes, Michael. Madam Chair, I move that we approve a Hawkers and Peddlers license for Pilgrim Lodge AF and A&M 706 Main Street. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero, Joe. I move that we approve a fee waiver request from Pilgrim Lodge AF and AM for the application fee for Hawkers and Peddlers license in the amount of $60. Second. Any discussion? Just a previous discussion, um, and this is one that we did deny last year after lengthy conversation, and we've denied many more requests for waivers of fees. This is not free. This costs the town money. This is $60, and we have, um, we have shot down at least two dozen since uh, this, and it was based on a matter of precedence, and now we're coming back and telling everybody that our precedence doesn't matter anymore. This is a $60 fee, not a 500, not a 600. Mm -hmm. $60 fee is paperwork involved uh, and staff time. Are we really going to start now again waiving all the fees after we've been denying, even from the folks at Cranberry Harvest Festival? And that's a statement, not a question. And I, I certainly agree with you. I think the. Um, $600 for six signs just really mm -hmm. jumped out at me. $60, I don't know that you can process a piece of paper for $60. Did I see your hand up? I, it was just to respond to Michael. The, the, the Howell Foundation uh, funded three or four of them, and uh, he's not in a position to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd have to have something more durable to discuss. Any, uh, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? All against? Aye. 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 Uh, that's one, three. Joe? Contracts we took care of, A. Um, you ready, Madam Chair? Yeah. I move we vote to approve a contract with Paul Kapanos and Associates, Inc. for tax title research in the amount of $93,600. Second. Any discussion? Thank God. <laughs> Michael? Um, this is nice to see. Uh, this has been a long time in the making, and this will start the project of uh, Article 39. Gail, who is known to us, has already cleared, I think the number was a little over a million dollars when she was working uh, in the assessing office. Uh, that's a statement. Question. Work material. Where is it stored and when do we get it? It's not in the contract. Is she working on site or is she working off site? And how are we going to get the work material? Joe, I believe that's to you. Yep. All it says in the paperwork, Joe, is that we own it. I guess what I'm looking for is direction on how we're going to tell them we want it. What I'm looking to see is under the bid where we ask them to identify their approach to the work um, about how they conduct the project. So that was uh, a criterion. I think even if the board approves it, uh, we can still um, follow back with them as the sole bidder. Uh, I am looking at a document that was provided by Paul uh, Capino's president of um, 
Paul Capinos and Associates. Uh, the first document is dated September 18th. I don't see that it states uh, where they're doing it. Then he gets into that. So that is something that we could follow up on, uh, but you could still approve, and you could also approve subject to a satisfactory answer on that. Um, Michael. If I may. Uh, I'm fine with that, Joe. I just want that to be a topic of conversation yep. because I do believe the town's property should be on the town site, maybe not weekly, maybe not monthly, maybe it's via email. Um, but this is only a one-year contract. It's a 10-year lift probably to get to where we need to get to to end all of the owner's unknown. We're going to want every piece of information that's created out of this, and that's important to me. If uh, I could, Madam Chair, could yes. you repeat the two concepts? I know you said... Um, they could email it. They could... No, sorry. At, at the beginning, you, you had two phrases that I want to make sure I capture. Uh, where is it stored and how do we get it? Yeah. Now, um, if I may, she may still have access to a town computer. Um, so there would be access to the shared drive. There'd be access to the cloud. Uh, unless there's objection, we can talk about uh, that as well. Uh, and I think it gets to the other parts. Yeah. No, I trust that you'll make uh, it clear what we want. Second question is scope of services uh, section of that contract, other professionals. And I guess my question is to the town administrator, are we going to await direction from Gale? Uh, are we going to put a timeline on it? When it says other professionals, one of the mentions is surveying. Um, I know the first part of this is going to be done digitally, but, but given that we have a $500,000 appropriation and we're spending $95,500, would not it make sense to go out for surveying? Um, bids now and maybe that there's somebody that they're used to working with, but rather than wait until we get to that point, shouldn't we put a survey, uh, a procurement out for a contract surveyor for this project? Uh, we certainly can. Can you just give me the reference that you were? So it was under scope of services and it says other professional services. Is that in the uh, draft agreement? Yeah, yes. I think it was in their RFP response. Okay, all right. Yes, yeah. Number six says coordinate with town surveyor or other outside mm -hmm. professional as necessary. We should know who that is. Uh, and Joe, all I'm looking for on that is for you to have a conversation with mm -hmm. them on when the appropriate time to put procurement out is so that we're not getting to a point and then waiting another 60, 90, or 120 days to hire those services. Well, I, I think to the point you're making, um, next steps with executed contract is to sit down, talk about project scope, deliverables, and next steps, uh, and figure out any ancillary actions like that. Um, so if the board approves this and we onboard them, that's the next step that we have in the conversation we have with the consultant. Great. So last, Mary, and then one statement. Um, Gail, because that's the employee for PK that's been mentioned, who's she reporting to? When is she reporting to them? And when does the board get updates? So that would be an internal matter, meaning um, this was an RFP or a process that went through the assessing department. So Carly has a has the right to have span of control directly. Um, of course, I'd work with the finance director as part of the finance division. Um, and then, as, again, as part of the onboarding, we can come up with that schedule of uh, output to the board. Um, I think if you look at the request for proposals, the town said that uh, at a minimum monthly status updates to the director of assessing uh, are required. So okay. we could get those and we can then share them uh, with the board if that's acceptable. Okay. I'd like to come up with a mechanism and you don't have to do it tonight, but given this was a board driven project that the board is not kept in the dark and that we get a minimum of quarterly updates on what the progress is. It's also a hundred dollars an hour and residents of the town are going to want to know what's going on without having to come in and ask Carly or you or anybody else. So it should be before this board on at least a quarterly basis on what the progress that's been made. 
Um, this board voted unanimously to support real estate and open spaces um, recommendation on three properties that were their priority for us to try and work on first. This goes hand in glove with that. And the priorities um, should be set. And, and through you, Mary, I'm not sure, Joe, if that comes from you or from this board or from a joint meeting that I'm included in and real estate and open space is uh, included in because the board voted or gave consensus for me to drive this project. But I think that it's very important that we not ignore the will of real estate and open space for the last 10 to 15 years and, and we work on the three properties that they deemed most important and this board agreed with. Well, we already voted that. I thought you did. We did. We, we, did. Vo we voted that. That's not part of this contract in any way, shape, or form in writing. So how do we relay that information to Gail and make sure that's the priority? We did vote it. Yeah. Right. But, but we didn't vote that with Gail or PK. So how are they going to get the direction? I would the, say that project onboarding. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Any Thank other? You. Any other questions on this contract? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero, Joe. Thank you. I move we vote to approve the license agreement extension with Bob Miller for the golf instruction services in the amount of eleven thousand eight hundred and sixty-five dollars sixty-six cents. Second. Uh, upon the recommendation of the golf director. Upon the recommendation of the director of golf. Still my second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero, Joe. Thank you. Town Administrator's Report. Uh, thank you. If you could just give me a moment. Yep. Um, uh, actually, I also need to send you these uh, documents. I think these are all the rest that you voted and will sign. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. And then for TA's report, I have some announcements on some... Um, Job hirings, um, I think the first is going to be a name that's familiar to everybody. Uh, Madison LeBlanc, who is, uh, was our administrative assistant in assessing, has been promoted to the role of assistant assessor. Um, she was expected to join us this week. Uh, do we know if she has yet? All right, she has. Thank you. Um, so again, uh, Madison LeBlanc is joining Carly as her assistant assessor. Um, Paul Hinckley has been hired as a electrician journeyman. This is for the uh, water department, and uh, he was set to start this week. Uh, Natalie Hutchings has been uh, uh, hired in the uh, building department to be an executive assistant, and that follows on the uh, promotion of Rachel Lohr to that zoning enforcement officer. And um, Ms. Hutchings is going to be joining us uh, next week. And then the only other thing I have here is just the standard uh, reporting that we have to do to uh, the Commonwealth on the MS4 um, program, and um, that was all in order. That would be my report. Okay, thank you. Selectman's report, Don? I told you I don't get out often. <laughs> okay. I'm good. Jeff? I'm good, Madam Chair. Thank you. Michael? Of course I'm not. So uh, to follow <laughs> up on, on Don's point, um, using, using the end of meetings, uh, this was related to golf, to build agendas. Um, there's a few items, and I'm not going to get to the depth of items I actually have. One of them I find to be very important, and it was related to fees. Um, town administration has the email, Mary, I believe you do as well. But it's been said that the uh, Rec and Youth Committee do not have to come to us to have uh, fee waivers done or um, to, uh, to update their fees. And I would like a legal opinion by the next meeting, because this is already sat out there for a few weeks, on whether or whether or not that's true. Uh, because I think before they issue any more fee waivers, if they're not supposed to, they get directed to send them to us. And if we're not supposed to be involved, fine. On fees, my reading of the charter is the only one that can set fees is the Board of Selectmen. And the thought that they are planning to move back into 204 Sisson Road on October 16th, uh, 
uh, with the pickleball program, and especially with the new information that we got tonight from the young folks that were in the audience talking about the youth and the lack of space for them. It's imperative, at least to me, and it was the consensus of the board in two past meetings that the rec director would bring back updated pickleball fees to this board before they started use in 204 again. So I think that that's something that needs to be addressed sooner rather than later and before it starts. And I have asked you, Madam Chair, for an agenda item related to 204. We made an awful lot of promises at town meeting last year on what we were going to do. And I'd like to see what we have done and what further progress we anticipate making before town meeting. Um, so I would love to see an agenda item related to 204 as broad as we can make it. But those questions related to rec and youth and use of that gymnasium, that is not their gymnasium, that's our gymnasium. It's the town's gymnasium. We control it. We've asked the town administrator to control it. And I'd like to see that before it moves further, any further than it already has. So those two specific items for agendas uh, would be great. And the third one I'm going to say is I would love to have an agenda item related to the land of low value that has already been approved by the town, by the state, that we've already done procurement on not once but twice, and the process that the town administrator is using now to put those back out to bid versus what our actual requirements are. Because it's a light lift, and it also falls into recommendations by real estate and open space. And I believe it's an easy lift for us to lower prices as we did the first time and list them a third time. Um, so we lowered them, advertised them a second time, and now there's a completely different process for lowering them and advertising them a third time. And if, if administration needs my homework from legal and from other towns' procurements on what our requirements are, I'd be happy to provide them. Okay, thank you. Can I have one thing to Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. J just one clarification, Michael. Uh, th there is one board uh, that can set their own fees. It, uh, board of Health has, the, uh, under Mass General Law, the authority to uh, levy uh, fees directly of their own choosing. But nobody, you're right, nobody else has that authority. Thank you. <coughs> okay. uh, thank you for that, and thank you for not saying REC, because that would have been an aha moment. I <laughs> never would say that because we have some vo voted positions on even use of I only want clarification. We have some voted positions even on the use of land uh, that have always made it clear that we have <coughs> uh, authority over these things. Motion to move. So moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? I moved so Aye. 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 Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Beat me to it. Them. Say again. Didn't we not agree to these before I sign everything? 